Hello, everybody. Uh, it's the 4th of February 2017. It's just gone half past one here in the United Kingdom. And I'm very pleased to be with so many people from all over the world. I can see people from many, many different countries logging in China, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, United Kingdom, France, Belgium. I, mean, I can keep going because we can see where the IPs are coming from. So, so many of you giving up your time. And, you know, we're going to talk today about how to make money and how to, bit, to create wealth. But actually, the biggest currency that we have that many people underestimate is, in fact, our time. And by coming here today and giving your time, you're creating for yourself, you're investing in yourself, the currency of time. And for that, I thank you, because whether I charge for these events or not, you still have to take your time out to see if you're going to get value from what I'm going to show you. And I'm pretty certain you will because I've not been doing this just for a few weeks or months. This is my 16th year of studying the markets, of studying the universe, for want of a better word. And I'll be quite frank with you. I'm, I, I've, I'm going to read to you today some comments from the late Steve Jobs, who um, was very inspirational in, in, in my life. And obviously, if you study Steve Jobs from Apple, you'll know he did a lot of amazing things. Um, I was very fortunate that I... Um, survived a near-death experience uh, a few years ago now, uh, which changed my life. So um, I can, I can, you know, Steve Jobs wrote some final words before he passed away in his hospital bed. I was in a similar place, but I survived. So I don't talk about that publicly a lot, but I'm not, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, crikey, something happened, and I'm here to tell the story. But the story is a success story. Um, you know, I've looked back at my last 15 years, and I can say the 15 years prior to those 15, um, I was drifting. I was a, I was a mess. I, I really wasn't as successful as I wanted to be, even though I was running four different companies. I had money. I had several houses. I had cars. I wasn't happy. And I, people look at me, what do you mean? you got all that stuff and you're not happy? Well, yeah, unfortunately, that's what happened to me. And I want to share some of that with you today. But I also want to know, I want you to know, rather, that the story I'm about to tell you and what's happened, not just to me, this is not about me today, by the way, it's about you. Because what I learned very quickly is, is experiences in life is very different for many people. And we're currently in a world where there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of uncertainty. And yet, there's a wealth of opportunity out there, especially in the financial markets. Do you know we're in the biggest bull market that we've seen in over 120 years? Do you know that most over half of the American population who once traded and invested in the markets have missed the big move because they're in fear, because they think something's bad about to happen? In the year 2000, we were all told the world was going to come to a standstill because of the millennium bug. 2012, the world was going to end because the Mayan calendar was coming to. I mean, I can keep going with all this rubbish. I mean, the problem we have as human beings of, and professionals and smart people know this is that we're very influenced by what we see and what we hear. But once you decipher the noise, just like you do in the markets, you can harness what I call the universal power laws to make your life a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. And you'll probably hear in my voice, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. And I enjoy what I do. You know, I wake up each morning with gratitude. And it's something that I didn't do many years ago. But I'll tell you, when, when you're close to death, you realize that life is extremely valuable and you treat it as such. So the title of this seminar is called How to Become a Full-Time Professional Wyckoff Trader and Investor Using the VSA Method. But there is m more chart reading in part three than we're going to have in parts one and part two. But, of course, we are going to use charts. But as I mentioned in my uh, email that went out to people, you don't even have to be a trader or investor to benefit from what I'm about to show you because you can apply it to anything you're doing in life. It does. I mean, my son who's just turning 18 in July this year, my eldest son, has, has done brilliantly, right, by all his friends at school are being told there's no jobs, it's terrible, um, you know, you're going to get all these exams and you're going to get A's and B's. You've got to get A's and B's, but there's no jobs out there. And you know something? It's terrible. I said to my son, Nathan, I said, listen to none of it. I said, if you want to go and get a job, I said, you've got to take massive action. You've got to believe there's a job and you've got to go and find it. And a few weeks ago, he came back to me. He said, Dad, I've got three, three bits of good news for you. I said, go on then. He said, number one, I did a financial exam. I came top in the United Kingdom. Here's the exam results. Top in the UK. That's Scotland, Ireland, England, and Wales. Top. 
Secondly, he said, Dad, something else. He said, I did an internship last year with a major insurance company here. And they basically didn't have much room to do, so they stuck him in a corner and said, Nathan, go and study where we're losing money in our insurance business in this area. He did two weeks, came back with a report, which he really put a lot of effort into. And guess what? They looked at it and went, my goodness, he saved us two million pounds. He's absolutely right about where we're leaking money. And point three, they offered him a full time job a few weeks ago and a significant amount of money for an 18 year old. So whatever you can believe, you can conceive, as I'm about to, to show you. So first of all, let's talk about. Um, well, first of all, my name's Gavin Holmes. And uh, you'll find out a little bit about me in a minute because I know a lot of you don't know me. A lot of you are new. We had uh, just over 1,800 people into the database in the last two weeks. And I know why that is. Um, a lot of it's to do with gold and the S&P 500. I mean, I've been bullish on the S&P. I've been bearish on gold. And we've seen lots of movement in these markets. We'll talk a bit about that. But really what we're going to start with, if you want to be successful in anything in life, it doesn't matter if you're a golfer, a professional sportsman, a professional investor, it doesn't matter what, you've got to understand what makes successful people successful and failures failures. So in this first session, which will last, as I say, probably between 75 and 90 minutes, we'll see. Um, we're going to talk about self-limiting beliefs and, and why those things are, happen to every single human being. It doesn't matter if you're the top of your game. Right. Michael, um, you know, there was well, I'll, I'll come back to that. Actually, um, there was a, a great story um, about a sportsman. And I'll come back to it, who said he failed hundreds of times before finding that success that he needed to be consistent and then be the best in the world at what he did. Of course, I'm talking about Michael Jordan. I nearly slipped that out. But of course, it is Michael Jordan, the great uh, basketball player in America. And he also had self-limiting beliefs at the beginning of his career, and he realized that failure was actually a stepping stone to success. And it is in the financial markets, as you're going to hear. So, you know, if you fail when you've taken a trade, if you've taken losing trades, if you're losing money in the markets, <laughs> believe it or not, it's, bad. it's not as bad as what you think. Because actually, we've all had to, as professional traders and investors, to get to our top of our game, had to learn what losing money feels like. It can be painful but it is a rite of passage. We're going to talk today about why it is that the retail market, I call them the herd, which of which I don't class you in that because you're here, why the herd, traders and investors in the herd, lose money and what they need to do to avoid that. The fact that you're here, you're giving your currency, which is your time, means that by the end of this session, you'll understand a lot more because, again, knowledge is power. There are keys to wealth creation. There are four keys that I'm going to talk about today, but there are more than that. There are keys to everything in life. Once you unlock it and you get the knowledge and you apply the knowledge, life changes. We're going to talk about the law of attraction. I've written about it in my book. Right? I talk about today, I'm going to talk about science. I'm not going to talk about anything more than science. In chapter nine of Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money, the book, my first book, it says the power of belief and the law of attraction in your trading strategy. Some people thought that was controversial when I first wrote that about seven years ago, and it's turned out to be the best and most read chapter and leads me into many, many opportunities to present all over the world. There's also an opposite law of attraction. It's called the law of repulsion, and it means that you lose money and you actually enter into poverty mindset. Poverty mindset does exist. It's existed since time immemorial because it's a fact of life that there's very many wealthy people happy with lots of money, with lots of material belongings. There are many more who don't have any of those things and actually believe that the world is against them. That's a belief system that you can change. A winner, they say that 5% in the stock market who are the public win consistently, consistently make money, consistently get returns from the market. I know it can be done because I've got hundreds of customers, thousands of customers that email me each year showing me their success. So they can do it. It definitely can be done. There's no doubt about it because they wouldn't be. I mean, people, we've, we've, we've got thousands of people on our database that trade, probably tens of thousands. If they every year continue to fail, they give up, but they don't. Many, many do make it. So if you're struggling at the moment, realize there is right around the corner success waiting for you. It's, it's like anything in life, though. When it's ready, it will happen to you. It did with me. Didn't happen instantly but it did happen. 
then we'll take questions, obviously, on what we're going to do. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning here, I'm dedicating this presentation and everything I'm doing around this presentation to uh, Gideon Robinson, uh, otherwise known as Iron Gideon. And if you want an inspiration in life, if you're having a tough time in your life, look at this chap. He's been through pretty much everything that the, uh, the medical facilities could throw at him to help him cure his leukemia, his cancer. It's a very aggressive form of cancer. And um, this is uh, the son of uh, my tech support, my head of tech support, AJ Robinson. Uh, they're based out in California. Now, I lived in Chicago for 16 years. Many of you know that. And I was absolutely horrified at the way the medical system in the U.S. works. I'm sorry, I'm not political at all. But I must admit, when I was having to pay $3,000 a month for medical bills, my wife has a, has a, a pre-existing condition. It was horrible when I got the, especially when I actually went into hospital and received a bill for 20,000 and I thought I was insured. So look, these things are happening. I, I, I just, I was shocked. Luckily I had the money to be able to pay my way, but not everyone does. So I want to assist the Robinson family um, as best I can and the company can, and we're doing our bit. But today um, I'm dedicating this to, to Gideon who's making a recovery. Um, yes, it's put an awful strain on AJ and the family, um, not just financially, but in many ways. But I can say, you know, AJ is a very strong guy. Most of you who've known AJ will know that he's not only always there and giving of his time, but I can tell you since he's worked for us, he's hardly had any holidays. Uh, he's fully committed to the trade guided cause, and he's a, a really nice guy with it. So Gideon, this is for you, my friend. We're going to talk a lot about life today because it's important and how we're going to make the best of it but we're going to get to some very interesting stories about the markets uh, as well during the event i'll post in here the facebook i can do it now so we don't forget the facebook page for gideon um, and if you are able to donate anything a dollar 50 cents whatever it is there's a little button there it says shop now they couldn't change the word to donate now i don't like the word shop now <laughs> sounds awful doesn't it but there we go it's not my page but there it is. Go and have a look at the story of Gideon. Uh, and if you're, you know, in need of some inspiration, read the story of this young man. I mean, he was in the news in, in, in California. He proposed to his nurse. <laughs> it's absolutely superb. Um, and anyway, he's making a good recovery at the moment. and We wish him all the best. So let's move forward then. Um, how do we go or did I go from that? A former police officer um, and... Uh, you know, I was, that was my dream. When I was at school and I was sort of 12, 13, my family didn't come from a law enforcement background, but I was determined to help people. That was what my thought process was. And I used to watch the local police officers uh, here in Southampton, where I currently live in the New Forest National Park, in fact, where I live. And I used to see what they have to, you know, a lot of the time they were helping people and guiding people. Then they were dealing with fights. And when I joined the police, I realized it wasn't quite as uh, luxurious and easy as I thought it was going to be. Yes, we help people, but I got beaten up three times and eventually I was uh, pensioned out with an injury. So my life changed immediately, but it changed for the better. Now, I won't go through my whole life story because there's no point. This is about you today, but let you, just to let you know, I was 50 last year, December the 19th, and I've been on a journey and it's been a wonderful journey. It's had its ups and downs. I've had my moments, as I've said, you know, very nearly wasn't here. But uh, I was able to write a book called Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money that's had a dramatic impact, not just on um, my life and the life of my family, but on the people that have read it. And it's been read millions of times now. Some people in Saudi Arabia and all around there have managed to pass this book around through the Internet. I don't mind. I have no, no objection to that um, because viral marketing works particularly well. And I also wrote a book about the complete VSA system explained. You're going to get copies of these today. So if you haven't got them, don't worry. And I'm now mulling. Um, uh, I've always said one of my dreams when I first met Tom Williams, the guy that taught me, who passed away in November of last year, as many of you know, in my arms. I was right with him as he, as he went. Um, he was an inspiration to me as well. And uh, he said, Gav, you've got to start your hedge fund. You'll be one of the best hedge funds, if not the best hedge fund manager in the world. And I always knew that's what I wanted to do. And it's happening and it's happening quickly. And lots of opportunities keep knocking on the door. The phone rings and something great happens. But there's a reason for that, as I'm going to show you today. Now, I've traveled the world. I'm very blessed. This is Tom. For those of you who didn't know Tom. Um, Tom was 87 when he passed, so a very good life, very inspirational, and I know he was extremely happy at the end to see the work that uh, uh, the team at Trade Guider, all of us, have put together developing 
a hedge fund piece of software, which we call Smart Center Pro. And we speak, we, we you know, this is Rafael in Poland. We spoke in Poland, Australia, all over the world uh, doing seminars. That's me um, actually talking about the BP oil crisis, which we're going to talk about today. And finally, before Tom passed away, he was able to contribute to our live trading event that we did in Chicago last year, uh, where we traded real money in the exchange using the Trade Guider system that I'm going to talk a little bit about today. But before we get on to that, I, I want to talk about just living life in general. All right. And, and one of the th well, I've learned a lot of things, but one of the things I've learned to be successful okay, is you can't look backwards. All right. Too many people that I meet who are, especially when they're having trouble trading. Right. And this, this is a blockage is they're continually looking back at where they went wrong and dwelling on it. They're continually looking backwards. And yet life and the planet we live on is always moving forwards. It doesn't move backwards. And yet human beings who get stuck in a rut are thinking with their brains, which is their most powerful tool about what happened last year, what happened the year before. People who are depressed, I, I have friends of mine that say they suffer from depression, and I don't doubt them. And they take tablets and things to, 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 to try to make it go away. And I say, well, look, even with your tablet, you're still thinking about the negative stuff that you've been through in the past. Um, if you wake up tomorrow and think about what happened to you six years ago or five years ago, it's not going to go away. You're just going to keep on regurgitating it into your future. Surely doesn't it make sense to reset your brain right now? But you don't have to do this next week and plan it for next month. Right now. And change what you think. Because you can. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it more than once where I've gone into a really negative spiral where something negative has happened and I've turned it into a positive. If you want a story, Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. He was fired from the company he once founded or did find by someone he brought in to turn the company around, got rid of him a year and a half later. And I've got the statement from Steve Jobs says the best thing that ever happened to him. When you suffer adversity in anything, even in trading, it's often one of the best things that will ever happen to you, but you won't see it until you move forward. And as Job said, you've got to connect the dots to find out what's happening in your life and make sense of it. See, I like, I suppose it's an analogy. It's the best way I can use it. I try to describe it. When you're living your life, it's like driving a car. You get in the car, you have an accelerator and you have a brake. Now, if you accelerate and you move forward, you're getting somewhere, aren't you? You're going from destination A to destination B. But if you're doing that, and as you're driving, you're looking in your rear view mirror, okay? You're not looking out the front. You're still looking at all those things in the back, like the regrets, the angers, the disappointments, the fear, the mistakes, the broken promises. I can go on. And I do hear this from people I talk to, customers that ring me and uh, people who are thinking about coming customers. I say, what's your problem? You know, once I get talking to them, what's, what's your issue? And many times it's fear. They don't want to change. They don't want to lose money. They don't want to take risk. But they want to, to be a trader and investor, but they don't want to do what it takes to get there. And it's a bit like playing golf. You know, I've been trying to play golf for years. I'm absolutely rubbish at it. And the reason I'm rubbish is I haven't got the time. Again, here comes an excuse. I haven't got the time to get on the golf course. I'm making time right now because I realize if I want to be good at golf, I have to go and play it. If I want to be good at trading, I have to go and play the game. And that's why I've become good, because I trade pretty much every day. But I don't trade for eight hours a day or 12 hours a day. None of that. Usually two to three hours maximum. And then I'm able to go and do what I'm doing now, walking, running, seeing the kids, taking the kids to school if I need to, picking the kids up. Great life, but I've created it. So when you're looking out the front of the, of the car in life, you, you're, you become optimistic. You become creative. You can take control. You become controlled because you're driving the car. You're looking where you're going. You can make changes. You can manifest things. That's a very powerful word, which I didn't believe a word of. When I heard that, oh, 15 years ago, I came across a book called The Secret by Ron DeBurn. And I talked about manifestation. I thought, what a complete load of nonsense being an ex-policeman, you see. That's the trouble with it, ex-police. We're programmed to, to pretty much look at the world in a very blinkered way. And if we're told and given an order to do something, we just go and do it a bit like a soldier. You know, if you're ordered to go over the, the trench 
and you know there's a thousand whatever enemy troops they're about to shoot at you but the maid sergeant major says off you go you don't say well if i go i'm probably going to get shot and die you just go and uh this is this is how you know human beings are, are basically conditioned but once you have knowledge in your life and that's what freed me up you realize you do have a lot more choices than you actually think you do and let me just ask a a question of the whole audience. Don't have to answer. So if you do, I, I'm not going to repeat who your name is. But it's just interesting sometimes to um, <laughs> Tom says, yeah, Steve Jobs getting fired was a great way to move the share price. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit of a conspiracy theory there. But yes, good. good. But look, let me ask you. It's thousands of people now. We've got a lot of people here. How many of you in this room, just in the last two weeks? have had any negative thoughts. And when I mean negative, I'm talking about guilt, anger, depression, regret. You know what a negative thought is? Just type in yes or no. I mean, some people will say no, which is great because they've trained themselves not to. But how many have had some sort of negative, aggressive, angry thought or reaction? And a, a, a reaction is actually from a thought. Okay, now look, I've got hundreds of yeses coming in, right? So, so this is human nature, right? This is nothing new. Right. But it's very important to trading and investing, because if you suffer with anger or short temper or um, you get depressed, you're going to make a lousy trader unless you manage it. And this is why I'm starting with this and not finishing with this, because this is the start, because you've got to start to be successful. You've got to start with you, not with a chart. Not with VSA, not with Wyckoff, not with what Gavin or Tom Williams or Wyckoff did. You've got to start with you. And you've got to take a hard, long look in the mirror and decide what you really want to be. If you want to make money in the markets, then this is your beginning of your journey today. You may have already been on a journey with me. You may already have seen me doing live trading. You may have even been at the CME event or online. You know it can be done. I've, I mean, I'm trading not just with a real account. I'm trading live. In, in competitions all over the world with real money. This hard, I don't know of another trader that's been able to trade live at the CME Group building with a real account, right? And that only was a few months ago, and that was part of my vision that I wanted to say, look, we have developed a piece of software that the biggest exchange in the world will take notice of, and they did. But that didn't happen by accident. That happened because of a, vis a visualization I had a year ago that we were going to have something and in order to make that happen i couldn't sit on my backside and just hope i had to create the right people the right environment and the right situation for it to happen and it did so when we're driving forward we must drive with our main focus not on the rear view mirror but what's in front of us what happens when we drive with our main focus in the rear view mirror and not looking at the front is this we crash I don't say we can crash, we do crash. Because what happens is, and it's consistent, if you go and study the people that suffer from depression or negative thoughts, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's something in the past that is holding them back to their future. And it doesn't matter if the future's wealth, health, happiness. But the great thing about the human brain, and I can tell you this from personal experience, you can reset it immediately. I mean, immediately, literally, once I finish this seminar, you can say, right, I can do, and I'm going to show you some things that you can do, that you can reset it. Now, in my case, I was very resistant to the information that came into me 15 years ago. It wasn't until the near-death experience that I woke up. Because being pre-programmed as a police officer, I would, someone would come up with a story or something about, you know, oh, if you think this, you can make this happen. I'd think, what a load of rubbish. <laughs> this 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 person I'm, t I'm listening to on TV or YouTube, what a load of rubbish. That's all my brain would say. So I never got good knowledge because I wouldn't listen. And this is a big, that's the biggest mistake I made in my life was to be closed minded. And unfortunately, if I knew what I knew, I'm 50. If I knew what I knew when I was 20, my life would be very, very different. But I don't regret anything because I had to go through the period of learning. So. Remember, actually, the past is the past. You're not going to change it. What you did yesterday, whether you did something really good or really bad, it's there. It's, it's happened. It's part of your existence. But what you can do, what you can create, is your tomorrow or your, your this afternoon or your this evening, your future. You can't change the past, but you can definitely influence the future. And that is the same whether you're trading, investing, 
playing golf, playing basketball, whatever it is you're doing in your life, you have the power and it's unlimited power to influence your own future. And once you know the tools to influence your future with this power, you'll see a complete change and it's quick. For me, once I embraced what I'm going to show you today and said, I'm going to try it, a miracle happened. I'm writing about it in the book. Now, the book Think, Link, Create was supposed to be published in 2012. And it never got published. My wife's pretty upset about that. But now looking back, just like with Steve Jobs looking back to try to connect the dots, I wasn't ready. There was more information that was coming at me. And losing Tom Williams and having Tom pass away with me next to him made me figure out a whole load of new things because I was able with Tom as he knew he was going to pass. He began to share with me things that he never did before. And that's made a big difference to me because he gave me information that he wanted to share with other people and stuff that he knew from his 87 years on the planet that he knew that, that people could be successful in the financial markets, but they have to get rid of their bad habits. They have to unlearn the rubbish that they've learned. They have to believe that the markets are rigged for sure. So, I mean, one of the, I mean, I'm a big guy. I love music, right? I love music, but I don't often listen to the lyrics. I mean, that's a mistake I used to make. You know, the lyrics are in the background and I'm just listening to the tune. But there is a very good band, UK band called Talk Talk. Some of you will be familiar with this band. Um, and I just want to read to you the lyrics. Um, and it's a, it's a brilliant uh, song. Um, this is basically um, Life's What You Make It. And it, and it's a really good sort of ballad, this, and it sums it up nicely because we're not perfect. No one, no human, I've not met the perfect human being yet. I'm, I'm still trying to find out. I remember Tom Williams saying to me, Gav, I'm not perfect, but I'm 99.9%, .9%, he used to tell me. But that's that's quite funny. He said, but we can try to be as, as not perfect. We're never going to get perfection. Right? Don't strive for perfection. I know some people do, and they, they, they get frustrated. But just try to be better than you are at the moment and and that's all you can strive to be and the, and the words say um you know baby life's what you make it can't escape it baby yesterday's favorite don't you hate it baby life's what you make it don't backdate it which means don't look in the rear view mirror life's what you make it beauty's naked baby life's what you make it celebrate it anticipate it yesterday's faded nothing can change it life's what you make it so being happy doesn't mean that everything's perfect. It means that you've decided to look beyond the imperfections. That's by someone unknown, but that's what happiness is. It's moving forward. Now, once you're in a trading and investing arena like myself, you've got lots of responsibilities. Your responsibility for, is, is for money. Crikey. But money, right, is, is not the most valuable currency in the world. And nor is gold or silver. The most valuable currency we all possess is our time. That's it. That's the most, and you know, I hate it when someone tells me they're sitting outside, you know, looking bored and you go, what are you doing, mate? I'm just killing some time. What? Killing it? Crikey, you've got limited time. Go use it. Do something positive with it. Doesn't matter what it is. Do something positive. Doesn't matter if you're on the internet looking at a positive video, but don't kill time. Because remember, it's actually you who are in control of your world. Now, you might think this after the last year. Of, of some of the negativity that's been, I mean, oh, it's it, it's almost every time you turn on the TV or the internet and you see, you know, like you go back for 2016 and you see the, the bile, that's the only description I can put of it, of what was going on in the US political world. And you just look at it, you think, oh my goodness, this world's a complete mess. Horrible. And I've, I've actually had people tell me this, Gavin, I'm giving up, the world's a complete mess. And the funny thing is that I said, listen, if you were to, if the, if the news, the media, were to report all the wonderful things that are going on in the world that you never hear about, like friends helping friends, babies being born, people getting married, people falling in love. I mean, all this, they never report that. Like Tom, Tom, always, Tom Williams always used to laugh at me with this. He said, Gav, there's no news in good news. He said, if you turn on the TV, if that's what you want to do, he said, there's no news in good news. He said, they'll either give you fake news and make you think the world's going to come to an end, or they'll just give you bad news or they'll tell you everything. I mean, talk about fake news. There's a story in America, I think the day before yesterday, some famous woman, I don't know who she's connected with Trump, 
talking about some massacre that never happened, right? I mean, this is on mainstream media. So it goes on. But what I'm going to tell you here is you are in far more control of your world than you actually know. Because as I found, you know, although I do get affected, I do watch news. I've got no choice, unfortunately, because I'm in the financial industry. So I have to look at news. But people say, Gav, you keep telling us to do the opposite of the news. And that's exactly why I look at it. Because if I see everyone's going to be buying gold and then the head of Goldman Sachs gold division comes on TV, as he did in 2011, and says, yeah, gold's going to 2,500. And I look at my chart and there's a big bout of volume and a narrow spread bar. And the next week, the price closes low. I know everyone's selling gold. Trouble is, when I go out on the Internet and tell everyone that, they think I'm stupid. And it's wonderful when you get emails, hundreds of them, from people going, you're such a fool. You think you know better than the guy at Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. And two years later, you look at the collapse of gold and you go, well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But I know I was short gold. Were you? And then I was on Bloomberg a few months ago and then I was talking to the guy at Bloomberg and I was saying this was actually when we, we did the interview um, out in Bulgaria. And. I said, you know, that the biggest news story that should be reported by the mainstream media over the last few years is that you finally admitted the financial markets are being rigged by the smart money. That's a story in its own right. What they don't tell you, however, is a great opportunity if you can understand how they're doing it. So my message to you is this. You are powerful. More power. You know, people say to me, Gavin, do you believe in miracles? One guy said, I said, listen, miracle. The fact that you're walking around this planet with a brain, you're not drifting on into, off into space, you can communicate with people because you've got your health, you know, your brain's working, that's a miracle. <laughs> so don't, don't ask me about miracles. The fact that we're here is a miracle. Um, remember, you are part of the creative process. So you have a de everyone's got destiny. I don't care who you are, where you are in the world. Everyone has a purpose. They just Some of them haven't found it yet, that's all. So what you see every day in the media, which happens to be, well, it's changing. It used to be 10, 15 years ago, the main, if not the only source of information was television, newspapers. We didn't really have the Internet. Today, things are changing. The world is changing. I make no apologies for that making that statement. It is. But it's changing for the better. It's changing for the much better. The fact that I'm broadcasting from a, an office in New Forest National Park to uh, I can now see 32 countries here, right, from people all over the world, different ages, different denominations, different religions, all listening into information that's not, you know, that there's no one over my shoulder saying you can't say that. You, I can say what I want. The world has changed. So remember that when you hear all negativity, especially in the financial market, I don't know what happened to this cat's ear. I mean, it wasn't my dog that bit that off, but there is, yeah, that's an unhappy animal. <laughs> So, so uh, sorry if you don't like the image, but there we go. It, it, it sums up quite nicely the, uh, the feeling of negativity. Negative messages are there to create anxiety. And that is it. how do you control the herd? You keep them anxious. You keep them in suppression. You tell them that don't worry, everything's going to be all right with this government or that government. You suppress their creative abilities. That's there's thousands of books on this subject that have been going back hundreds of years. But most people don't teach this. In fact, I know they don't teach this at school. It's not on the syllabus. I said to Nathan, my son, I said, so what do they teach you about, you know, dealing with negative uh, media stuff? He said, no, nothing. And I said, what do they teach you about becoming an individual and doing your own thing and not listening to other people sometimes? He said, well, nothing. No, I've got to follow what they tell us. Well, exactly right. You're conditioned from birth. Really? Everyone is. When I went to school, I went to a religious school when I was younger, when I was in my you know, five, six, seven, taught to stand in line, taught to follow the rules. When I was a policeman, same thing. There's your truncheon. There's your, there's your uh, radio. You take orders from the sergeant and the inspector. You do exactly what we say. You do it. So the great saying, I love this one, and this is very, again, very much uh, related to the financial media. If you do not read the newspaper, you are uninformed. If you do read the newspaper, you are misinformed, says, says Mark Twain. Oh, what a great comment that is. Remember this, though. Good, good news, right? Really positive news just doesn't sell. No one's interested. Why do you think you've got all these stories um, and all these programs? And my wife, unfortunately, watches some of these. 
about you know housewives of Beverly Hills, housewives of this, and and then they they do these following families having arguments and getting drunk and abusing stuff. That sells. Hey, people watch that stuff. I have no idea why, but my wife does, so I can't really say anything different because it's out there. And it's someone else's life, and they take a massive fascination with it. And they don't actually deal with the issues in their own life. Listen, you are in control. Ignore the negative news. I mean, let's, let's look at some examples, just to give an example. Yeah? Yeah, exa exactly, Miguel. Yeah, just look at Deutsche Bank. Exactly. Um, the year 2000, right? I broke my leg just before this happened. The best thing that ever happened to me as well. Right? And I, I know I look back now. I connected the dots going backwards. That was a changing point in my life. But I remember them saying, you know, the Millennium Bug, all the computers are going to crash. And I was in a com computer environment at the time. And all the technology guys were there, New Year's Eve. Oh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting for it all to crash. Headlines and all the new tech, it's going to be terrible. Airlines could drop out of the sky. Don't fly on New Year's Eve. I mean, it, it, kept, it kept going. So I woke up on January the 1st. I thought, my goodness, I better check my clock. Well, it was working fine. I checked my computer, working fine. I thought, I wonder how many aircraft have crashed today. None. Yeah. Hardly anything happened. But, you know, for months, people have milked the hell out of that. I mean, if you don't believe that one, 2012, not even that long ago. The Mayan apocalypse, the end of the world's coming. Some people actually gave up all their earthly belongings ready for this moment. And then when it didn't happen, they'd lost everything. Many stories of that. Now you think to yourself, hold on a second. Well, this has been going on for decades, hundreds of years. There are stories of this is going to happen, that's going to happen, that's going to happen, creating anxiety, fear, depression. But when you look back and connect the dots, nothing happens. So it's about time to get real, right? <laughs> Gar, I won't read that out. But yeah, look, forgetting all of it, right? Again, I'm trying to get a message here. That if something really, if the world's going to end, you're not going to know about it, right? You're, going, you're not going to wake up because they're not going to tell you first. It's a bit like someone said to me, give me an example of that again. I said, do you remember the flash crash in 2010 when the market collapsed? I said, yeah, yeah, I remember. Did they tell you the day before it was going to collapse? No, it was afterwards I found out. Right, 9-11, the day before 9-11 on the 10th. I said, did they warn everyone there's about to be a massive attack on America? It was after they turned. So all of these things, they're not going to tell you to, to get over it. The fact was nothing happened. So stop living in fear today because there's no point. It, it's just going to make you anxious. And some people resort to alcohol. Some people resort to drugs. Some people resort to all sorts of other things. It doesn't solve their problems. It just doesn't. Remember, news. Now, let's get into some financial examples now, right? News is used very effectively by smart money. What do I call you know, someone said, what's smart money? It'd be interesting to see. I'll ask you at the end how you would define smart money. My definition is this. Smart money just makes money. It doesn't lose money. It makes money. Each year, smart money has a bigger account than they started with on January the 1st of 2017. If they look at that account on 31st of December 2017, they've got a profit. It doesn't matter if it's Joe Bloggs, the plumber from Limington who started with £500 has now got £1,000. It doesn't matter whether it's Deutsche Bank, who started with £2 billion, have now got £20 billion. It doesn't make any difference. They're smart because they made money. But it's not that difficult. This is the bit that gets frustrates me. Everyone makes trading and investing into this really complicated thing. And I have to say, I will admit that when I first came across Tom and Wyckoff and the VSA method, and Tom said to me, well, as the market goes up on this high volume, you should think of selling it. I thought he was talk I thought he was nuts. I really did. I thought, sort of, yeah, it's funny. The guy's telling me the price is going up, all this volume's coming in, and he's saying I should be looking to sell. <laughs> I said, surely, Tom, you must be mad. If everyone's buying, that's what's causing the price to go up. And the volume is all the buyers causing the price to go up. He said, well, there's more to it than that. I said, well, what sounds is to it? He said, look at the time frame let's say it's a daily chart look at the price action on that day and look at where the price closed in relation to that volume and that will tell you the real truth and he was right it took me a little while to get my head around it because it is contrarian 
it is not he, Tom Williams never ever ever in any webinar said well yeah trading's easy trade trading's so simple tra tra in fact trading anyone who can't trade is stupid he did never he's never said that he's never said that now I'm going to give you all a link to some very interesting articles and some videos. Now, I'm not going to play them in here because there's not enough time, but I'm going to give them all to you. There's no charge again for this. This is a new thing, but I'm going to just read something to you, and you can read the rest of it in a minute. Um, and it says, see how Wyckoff VSA method wins trading, and this is real money, real traders, not me. This is nothing to do with me or anyone in our company, just customers, and we've got other articles as well, but we've picked out a couple here. Um, World Cup trader relies on Wyckoff method is the top one. You can you've got this link so you can go and read it. That's about um, Earl Erinler came second trading futures and um, uh, in the I think it was 2011. But anyway, he said here in his studies of the markets, Erinler came upon the book Master the Markets by Tom Williams, my, my mentor, of course. He began using the methods from this book in June 2007. In fact, I beg your pardon. It was that's when he started and he won the competition or came second a few years later. And he credits his reliance on this approach, which includes Wyckoff theory, as one of the reasons he began to see consistent profitability in his trading. He became a full time trader at the time. Now, here I want to talk to you about Tim Raymond, Tim Raymond, the solitary trader. And uh, Raymond, not once, twice won the Forex trading championship using volume spread analysis. OK, so Forex. Yes, there's volume in Forex. Not going to go into it now, but. 44% in a year in Forex. You can't get that in any bank. And he did it using the VSA method. And again, here it says early mentor. And I'll read this to you because it will lead you into why I hope you'll stay with me today and come to the live trading session. You're here because you want to make money, I hope. You're here you want to better your life and your future, I hope. That's what I'm here to teach you. Early mentor. In 1998, Raymond had the good fortune to connect with Tom Williams, the creator a volume spread analysis. I rang him. He was very reluctant to sell me his software. He said, trading's very difficult, you know. I insisted and agreed I'd pay £5,000 in instalments, Raymond says. These days, if I'm asked by someone who is starting out in trading for advice, the first place I send them is the Trade Guider website. For me, it demystified the markets to a great extent, Raymond says. And the whole article, and there's a few customers typing in, it's a great article. It is. That's available to you right now uh, from this link that I've just sent into the room. And it's basically tradeguider.com test fact sheet. It's a new fact sheet, which has got some videos in here. It's got introduction to, someone said earlier, how do I get started with Wyckoff VSA? This is where you start. And then the next thing I'm going to give all of you for your homework is the chart reading masterclass that Tom Philip and I produced, which you please, please do this before Wednesday, because today I'm limited with the amount of charts I'm going to show. But this class, if you take it, and again, it's got a value, this class is $795. We're giving you that class as part of this. Go and have a look at it. It's all video. OK, it's got an introduction section and it's uh, Tom Williams when he was here. Philip Friston, who's a professional fund manager, and myself showing you the key principles. There's only eight each side that we focus on that will help you understand how to trade. So how is news used by smart money? Well, look at this. 2011, <clears throat> the start of the big bull run. World stock markets in turmoil. In turmoil. Right Now, of course, price is going to fall as these headlines appear, as panic selling comes into the market. In fact, in this instance, 50 billion was wiped off the price of stocks. And if I told you on news days like that, I look to buy the market, you're going to say I'm mad. But I'm going to prove to you that's exactly what you've got to you've got to pre-program yourself or reprogram yourself to look for the opportunities when these news opportunities appear. Because you can't buy something that's popular and do well. You have to buy something that's not popular to make money. And, you know, buying gold at the top is stupid. But thousands, hundreds of thousands of traders, fund managers, investors did exactly that and lost money. I will guarantee this. If you follow what we teach, 
you will become a smart trader. And a smart trader is a trader that's profitable. But it just depends how much effort you're prepared to put in. So we now look at all the bad news that came in. This is just one schematic from a presentation I did a few years ago um, when I was at MIT in Boston. And I want to show you a few of the things that, that, that came in here. First of all, volume, of course, is very important to the trade guider um, method, um, as you'll learn from, from that course I've just given you. And very high volume as the market collapses is showing professional money stepping in buying at lower prices so they can sell at higher prices. Now, this is the S&P 500 futures contract, the E-mini, which is now trading up at nearly 2,200. So you can see that every opportunity to buy came on bad news. The credit crisis, the government downgraded by S&P, and the Greek crisis, right? all crises, right? The fiscal cliff, remember that? We never fell off it because there's no such thing as a cliff in the first place. Fed start tapering. I mean, I can keep going. I think there's one about Ebola as well. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Love this one. I've got to read. I'm going to read this in my um, media voice. Fear has returned to Wall Street this fall, and at least some of the heightened nervousness can be pinned on Ebola. Right. So what's Ebola got to do with the price of Google and Apple? Well, we'll see. That's not to say the deadly virus is the number one thing keeping investors awake at night. There's concern about the global economy. Deflation in Europe, China slowing growth, Federal Reserve policy in Ebola. Oh, my goodness, the world's coming to an end. If I told you that was a buy signal, <laughs> and the time it came out, it was, you'd say, Gavin, you're talking total nonsense. World stock market slide as bad news mounts up. <laughs> Fears of global economic slowdown, tensions in the Middle East. Now we'd added another one. Spread of the Ebola virus. I'd weighed on the world shares. Look at the date, everybody. 10th of October, 2013. You can see it. Yeah, Fitzroy, I'll put that link in again. I've already put it in, but I'll do it in a minute. So you can see the news is negative. In fact, it says here the Dow Jones lost 330. No, it, it's all, everything's lose, 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 lose. If I told you to buy there, you'd say I'm mad. Let's go and look at the actual date. Here we go. All right, this is the October the 14th week. 2014 here's the month okay here's October okay and this is the news that came in Ebola now I'm just gonna ask you some questions just so you can get this what do you this is volume weekly chart volume what do you notice about the volume on the week that news is absolutely terrible what do you notice just type in what do you notice about the volume as the terrible news hits the market what do you notice here that's volume right at the bottom of your screen here. What do we notice? J just type everyone, type in. I just want to make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing. So there's no doubt. I, I, I encourage you to do that because it reinforces it in your own mind. Yeah, it's, 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 it's what I call Yao Ming. Um, it's a spike, yes. Now, one of the interesting things about that spike, it's on a down bar, right? And a down, I've used a candlestick here as an example, right? I think they call this a hammer. I don't use candlesticks, but one of our customers said, Gavin, I've been making a lot of money on hammers with your signals on the bottom of the hammer. I've no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but if you make money with it, great. This is a good example, though. The hammer followed by the reversal. Now, the news is terrible. We have what we call climactic action, which means buying. Notice in Trade Guide or VSA, we have what we call green indicators, which are known as signs of strength. And this is called shakeout when I mean, it's exactly the news is bad. I mean, you can read it. It tells you that was there. The week that news came out, that signal appeared. A shakeout is a markdown on a widespread closing up near the high, which it did to shake out weak holders. High volume, which it is, suggests demand overcame the supply. But remember, this supply will hold back future progress, Okay, which in this instance, it didn't. It just kept going, as we now know. If the spread is narrow, it will have less impact. Exercise caution if the bar is gapped down, which it didn't. If volume is ultra high, this can be climactic action, which it is, and the start of accumulation, which is what it was, buying. Okay, look at the background. 
OK, you should see strength in the background where there's lots of green strength. But the nice thing about this indicator and this system is it's intuitive and it tells you what to look out for. The next bar should be up to confirm it. Two green signals. If all that volume was selling, which is what was inferred in all of the news media, because they don't know any different. The media do not know any different. This is why Bloomberg won't put me on there and, and BBC won't put me on their mainstream channels, because when you show them the truth like this, it makes a mockery of what they're reporting because they're telling everyone here on this bar that everyone's selling and there's panic selling. There's not. Everyone's professionals are buying and we know they must be buying because if that was all selling, we would close. The next bar would close down here like that, but it doesn't. The next bar springs up. And we start this massive rally. This is how the markets work. Once you understand that, you're in a much, much stronger position. Another example. Someone, I was, again, I was, um, what is my definition of a weak holder? A weak holder is someone who's brought a stock or an instrument higher, sees it collapse in price, so they're now in a losing position. And then they see it with really bad news falling further. They can't afford to hold on anymore. They puke out. They go, oh, I feel terrible. I've got to sell. And just as they sell, the whole thing rallies. That's a weak holder. That's what it is. Okay, that's a weak holder, Jerry. A weak holder doesn't make money. They buy tops. They sell bottoms. I'll give an example here. BP shares. I, I, I was, um, again, at MIT Boston. I've done a couple of presentations there. And um, Boston Traders Group, 2010, height of the BP oil spill crisis. And the week before that I did my presentation, Tom had rung me, said, Gavin, they're buying BP. I said, what do you mean they're buying? I said, Tom, have you seen the news? He said, Gav, they're buying. I said, that's rubbish, Tom. Seriously, there must be something wrong with the software. Gav, they're buying. But this was the day they couldn't cap the well. I said, Tom, they can't cap the well. They're going to go bust. Gav, they're buying. This was a signal. This is actually where they couldn't cap the well, just in here. I think it was that day there. We cannot, there it is, there it was. We cannot cap the well. Colonel Gaddafi is going to take over BP. I mean, all, all of it came in. Look at what this, this is actual chart. The stock actually doubled in value in six months. And every signal that we had, there was no red ones down here. They were all green. And the place to have bought that stock was actually right in here. When it went above the top of that bar, which we call a trigger number, if you bought it around 40 where the testing was, OK, you'd have missed the big move. Some of the customers that we had bought down here at the bottoms here because they had on the daily chart what we call bag holding. And it's the total opposite. That's bad news. When the news is really bullish, that's when everyone buys at the top. This is gold. OK, hidden selling. Gold. OK, so if we go and look at the headline here, August the 19th in market watch and it was all over other other channels as well gold's not the only safe haven by the way oh, every single safe haven they mentioned in this article collapsed by the way so it's not just gold but gold happens to be the one okay gold has climbed by a phenomenal three so again it's bullish news everything's bullish here got a nice chart here looking bullish gold prices are up 20 percent year to date and by the way when that happens they keep telling you it's going to go higher this is what happens. It's going to go higher. And do you know what happens? For the next couple of weeks, it does go higher. And they look clever. And you're like, oh, my goodness, I've missed out. I better get some gold. I know several people that did this. They said, Gavin, you're talking nonsense. You say gold is, going to, is in a bubble. I said, look, you can't buy something that's popular and do well. And lo and behold, this is what happened. We know that happened. That's, you know, we're now in 2017. Gold collapsed. It collapsed to new low. I mean, it went down to nearly 1,100. Still got a way to go. It's been marked up since. But it's that's a buying climb. Look at the volume at point A. Right? That's what, and what happens is at point A, prior to you've got the news coming out in August that gold's going up, it shoots up. Everyone buys the top. Totally illogical. The time to buy gold is down here somewhere at 1,000. Not there yet. I'm not buying gold. I've been shorting gold. There's the headline a few years later. Oh, gold price after this safe haven that we told you about. 
It's collapsed. It's the worst in 30 years. Hopefully you're starting to get the picture here. You want to make it in the market. You want to make it. You want to, you want to understand the market. You better figure it out. I'm going to give you a video again now, okay, from Michael Lewis. How many of you here have heard of Michael Lewis who wrote Flash Boys? Again, this is all homework for you to do afterwards. Okay, there's a, there's a little bit of work for you to do. It's not much. It's about an hour's worth of study. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. I just saw that. Yeah, I, I, I actually saw that article as well. So this is Michael Lewis here, right? Get fleeced all the time in the poker game because they don't know that the deck is rigged, right? The poker players pay the casino a cut of what they make. The, the casino operators pay, pay the tour group, uh, the tour group company, money to bring in the tourists. Uh, so the tour, in this case, casino is the exchange. The poker players are the high-frequency traders, and the tour group operators are the banks and the brokers that handle the stock market orders. And I think the analogy is pretty close. Uh, so is that rigged? Is that a rigged game? I think it is a rigged game. There you go. Go and have a look at the article. Uh, Pet, I, I just saw your um, uh, comment there. Um, I'll just read it out. I did some research, a big, big research on VSA on Forex, and I think that VSA principles can be applied only on centralized markets, equities. I work with VSA more than six years, but it's impossible to make a consistent return on longer term using Forex. Don't agree. I've got thousands of customers who are using Forex every day and making money, and they, some of them are investing three to six months. So, And I've got two, two funds that work with us trading Forex. So I cannot agree with that statement. I'm sorry, because I can prove it. Um, I have to say, reading your two books, what, okay, thanks, Miguel. Good. I don't expect everyone, by the way, to agree. If you, Some people will, will take the system and may not be able to make it work, right? But I can tell you for a fact, Tim Raymond won the Forex competition, which was long-term investing twice. That's a fact. That's not me doing it. 44% return. So he did it. So don't say it can't be done because one individual might not be able to do it doesn't mean it cannot be done in anything, including trading and investing. So again, if, if someone studied something and said, I can't do it, that's the word can't. Steve Jobs will tell you, Things can be done if he was still here. There's no such word as can't. You're just doing it the wrong way. So talking of Steve Jobs, here we see the inspiration. Find what you love, says Steve Jobs. Totally agree with him. Find what you love to do, whatever it may be. And if, if you're here and you want to trade, you want to invest, then great. If that's what you want, you have the right to do it. Yes, you will have to put some effort in. Yes, you will need a trading plan. Let's look at some of the words from Steve Jobs that actually, I believe, have a very big impact and make total sense now as we look forward, because that's what we're going to do. We're not going to look backwards. We're going to look forward. So that's what this is all about. So you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down, and it has made all the difference in my life. So learn, but do not dwell on past mistakes is the lesson here. Even in trading and investing, connect the dots for your great and promising future. And that's exactly what happens. If something negative has happened to you in the last week, month, year, whenever, you've got to look at the positives that will come out of it. Because, again, you know, there will be storms, there will be rain, there will be clouds. But there will also be sun. Just as I know, I'll wake up to this morning and the sun is out here. Yesterday, it was overcast and there was a storm. Life's the same. It's not always going to be going in one direction. But you can certainly help it along. If you want to have sunny days, it's down to you. This is great from Steve Jobs as well because it, it, it sums up when you get a challenge in your life. And this, for me, in trading has been very true as well. When I've had bad weeks in my trading. When I look back, it's actually helped me refine my trading plan. And it's turned out to be a blessing, not a problem. And I never trade enough money to lose my accounts. I always have a very tight risk profile, which we'll talk about on Wednesday in the live trading session. He says, I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could ever have happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. 
Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because to almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You're already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Very true. Um, <laughs> very true, Marvina. He who needs the medication most is the person who does not know he is ill. Yeah. Um, Pet says it's about Forex averaging six to eight trillion US dollars per day. We can't have even one percent of what's going on with, liqui with liquidity. Uh, that is the problem with volume on Forex. Well, again, I can show you if you want to email me, Pet. I've got an article of a scientific study that was done two and a half years ago on volume in Forex. And they've said in that study that volume is a very vital and very useful to the trader or investor or fund manager because I'm using it. And B, the best time frame to use volume on, and it's called tick volume. It's not traded volume. It's tick volume is the 60 minute chart. I use it all the time. And if you come on Wednesday, you'll see live trading with my real account using the 60 minute chart. So if you don't believe it, come and see it. So. Again, going back to what we're talking about here, we live for today. Okay, forget tomorrow's another day. You've got to have plans, but you can't look backwards and regret because that's not going to help you. I mean, this is a lovely little uh, cartoon. I, I like this a lot. Uh, put this on. You'll look more beautiful with it. Oh, yes. Smiley face. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, just be happy. And you have the choice. There's no one else can make you happy. Right? You think there is. Oh, well, I could watch a cartoon. I could do this. You can make yourself happy by thinking it, and thoughts will come to in a minute because they're very important. Talking of which, how can you, you connect the dots for your future, right? That's what we're going to talk about because I can show you charts. I can show you when to trade, when not to trade. I can show you how to manage a small account or manage a big account. But ultimately, you're not me. You are you. And you've been through a different life experience to me. You may live in China. You may live in Singapore. You may have been to school and be educated. You may be uneducated, never have been to school. And I've talked to some people who didn't go to school and are traders. And they're very good traders. So, you know, everyone's different. So it's all about you. You got to look in the mirror after this event and say, right, I want to make some changes. And those changes I've always found are much better made once you commit them to writing where you put them on a piece of paper. Same with the trading plan. You put them on a piece of paper. And yesterday, you're also going to get a copy of a trading plan because it's damn important. I'll give you my personal trading plan. I'm not going to talk through it because I haven't got time. But you can read it, and from it, you'll take some of the things that I use to trade. Now, again, we were talking earlier there about Forex. I trade Forex. I trade with volume in Forex. I can show MT4 charts with Forex. I can show the very same principles that I just showed you in gold and the S&P in the longer term charts of the, of the British pound. The British pound was heavily, heavily sold into when the Bank of England governor, Mark Carney, said he was going to raise interest rates two and a half years ago. It's got the same signal in gold. So no one can tell me that volume in Forex doesn't work. It absolutely does. And if anyone does tell you that, do not believe them because it's incorrect, as I will prove on Wednesday by showing you live actual examples of that. So how do you connect the dots? Well, go and ask yourself these questions. And again, don't type these in. These questions um, um, are, are very much for you. OK, so number one, are you in control of your life and circumstance? That's a question you've got to ask yourself. Do you believe you can control your life and the circumstance that you're currently in? Do you believe you are rich or poor? Very important. Do you believe you have a direct influence over your current circumstances? I should put an S on that because circumstance is also a word, good or bad. That's an important question to ask yourself. Are you responsible for the outcomes you're getting? Do you accept that you're responsible for the outcomes you're getting? Or do you say it's everyone else's fault? Most people I talk to have lost money in the market. Do never look at themselves. They always blame other people. They blame the teacher. They blame a book they read. They blame a software product. They, they blame everything but their own individual person. 
Um, per, yes, I do have statements, exactly. And as a registered entity, we are registered here in the UK. Uh, our um, hedge fund will be publishing uh, in October all of our trading results for this year. So if you want to see them, once we uh, launch the fund, it's the Wyckoff Williams Investment Portfolio, all our statements and trades will be made public as we're registered with the FCA. Um, so, yes, and on Wednesday, I will give you, I will read everybody the FCA statement. So um, when you do want to go and log in, when we uh, publicly announce the fund, um, you can go and take a look for yourself what our results are so you can see for yourself. Um, do you believe in universal laws? Now, you know, there's religious laws, there's scientific laws, some of them cross over. I'm neither going to get into really religion or science today. I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the things I've discovered for myself, um, which have helped me personally and have helped other people. And I'm not just talking about people close to me. I'm about talking about people I've never met who've emailed me and said, Gav, you, 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 um, yeah, I'm going to take a break here in about uh, three minutes, uh, Robert, so don't worry. Um, I, I, I've given these examples to people who I, did, I don't know or have never met, and then six, seven months later, I've had a letter or an email or a message to say how it's made a dramatic difference, difference to their lives in different ways. So you've got to understand that you are a human being like me, and you have exactly the same power. We all do. It's just how we use those powers and how we connect to the bigger force that's, uh, that's amongst us. Um, do you want to improve and enhance your life experience? Very important. You're here today. There's lots of you here. I haven't lost anybody. Clearly you do. And by the way, if you're skeptical on any of this, I don't blame you. <laughs> I was. I mean, uh, Pet, you, you're, you're talking about Forex. I totally accept your skepticism. I'm not uh, I'm having a pop at you. Please don't think I am. I hear it every... I was doing a big interview on a, on a TV station two years ago about Forex. And I said, yeah, we use volume in Forex. And three other people from major market makers said, you, you don't get volume in Forex. It's completely useless. It doesn't work. I'll try and find the article for part two so I can put it in the room for you so you can see it. But, you know, that's three market makers, big market makers in Europe in Forex who said you can't use volume. Well, afterwards, I realized that they didn't want their customers to see the volume and use it because they realized it could lose them money. So it made total sense to me why they were saying it. So do you want to improve and enhance not just your trading and investing, but overall your life experience. And I believe it's yes, because you're all here. So I'm going to show you ways to do that. And I'm going to ask you one more question before we take a break here in about one minute. Are you willing to use your mind, your, your thoughts, like a parachute? A parachute is best used when it is open. Okay. It is recorded, Will, to answer your question. And uh, Michael... Um, Yes, um, no problem. If, you, if you've got questions on this, the best person who you can email is actually my wife because she has direct access to me, obviously, and she organizes my diary and schedules things in. So a couple of people said I've actually got questions about the software. Um, if you've gone through the website, at the moment we're about two weeks behind following people up because of the number of inquiries we've had. We've only got two sales guys in the company, um, Danny over in Australia. We've just bringing on Jesse in America and myself. So Look, we're not a massive company with hundreds of sales, but in fact, we don't have salespeople. We don't sell. You know, we consult. We don't sell anything, really. So if you want to, um, if, you, if you're interested in talking to one of the traders that trade with the system and have made money with the system, some of them are ex-customers as well, we can connect you. Just email my wife, Laura. I'll put that in the room there now. And it's just Laura at tradeguider.com. And her name is Laura Woodham Holmes. I'll just post that in there for you. For those of you that have got some questions, it's Laura Woodham Holmes. There we go. And I'll post it again there, just Laura at Trader. That's the quickest way to, to get answers if you've got questions about the software specifically. Okay. Um, so the mind is like a parachute. It's best used when open. I love that picture. I mean, that's a good example, isn't it? Yeah. She's the boss, Gav. Yes, Martin. She's... She appears to be the boss. <laughs> I won't say anything on that one. I'll get myself in trouble because she's listening. Um, okay. Yeah, Pet, the, um, the volume that you get from MT4 is absolutely connected. Let me just answer this question because Pet's asked in a few questions about Forex. I'll talk more about it on Wednesday. But just going back to that, 
the way I check volume for Forex is correct, and I'm not being ripped off, is I use the futures volume for a currency pair. Give an example, right? So I want to trade the British pound in Forex. We have, right, in the um, futures market that I also trade, the 6B, which is the currency futures contract of the British pound, which I'm showing you here. And you can see we've got very high volume. This is from an exchange. This is a centralized exchange. Okay, so this is actually exchange traded volume. It's a 15 minute chart of the pound. Now, when we come back, I'll show you the same chart in MT4. And if it looks different to that, I know something is wrong and I'm being ripped off, but it never does. It never happened to me because the markets are arbitraged. So if they move in the futures market, they're going to move in the spot as well. And I'll show you that little trick before we go. So before we take a break, your mind, uh, my name shows up as that, does it? I don't know how it could do that, but there we go. Um, no idea how that happened, Gar, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Um, yeah, so let me come back to that. Um, I'll show you that at the end of part of part two. So yeah, going back to what we're saying here, your mind is like a parachute. Don't use it like that. It's best used when it's uh, when it's open. All right. So what we'll do now, we'll take a fifteen minute break here. Well, thirteen minute break up until um, let's let's come back here at three p.m. UK time. Okay, about twelve minutes time. Go and grab a cup of tea, whatever you want to do. I'm going to pause the recording right now. And uh, I'll see you all back here in about 12 minutes time for the rest of this presentation. And at the very end, I'm going to do a stock scan of the S&P 500 and show you two or three stocks that are about to move next week. So you can follow them with me on Wednesday when we do the live session. Thanks for being with me. Be back with you here in about 10 minutes and uh, hope you're enjoying this. Uh, obviously, it looks like everyone is. We haven't lost anyone. So hope you're enjoying it. And uh, thanks for your time, which I know is your currency. And I know it's important. And uh, I intend to make the best of the next uh, hour and a half as well. See you in a minute. Thanks a lot. Okay, hi, welcome back everybody. So uh, let's continue where we left off then. So let's just remind ourselves what we talked about there. We, we talked about our mind being like a parachute. Um, and of course, I'm just going to ask you for the rest of the session here. Let's use your mind like a parachute. Use it best when open, just like that. So let me just ask a question uh, as we move forward here. Um, Yes or no answer, just from everybody. How many of you in the room, and there's a lot of you, how many of you have heard of the universal law of attraction? Yeah, Themistocles, I just saw your comment about leaving, leaving profits on the tables and, and coming out too soon. We're going to cover it Wednesday. We're going to cover it. We're going to show you on Wednesday, but I'm going to give you my trading plan, which covers that as well. So um, we will cover that more on Wednesday. So look, I'm not surprised that over 65% of you have typed in, yes, I have heard of the universal law of attraction. Now, what is a law, a universal law? The world that we currently live in as human beings is governed by laws. Now, these laws have been around since the world started, but they're very misunderstood. And many of them are becoming more and more understood as science takes hold. I'll give you an example. I've written about this, by the way. If you've got a copy of my book, you will all have it at the end. If you read um, chapter nine, which is a very interesting chapter, it's actually the one that gets most uh, comments when people email me. It's called The Power of Belief and the Law of Attraction in Your trading strategy and I start this chapter with in some ways this will be the most difficult and even most controversial chapter to write this was several years ago now but in other ways since this come this topic comes from the heart it will be the easiest before 2006 I knew little or nothing about the importance of one's self own self belief system I'd never heard of the law of attraction in fact I'd never even considered that the other universal laws apart from the law of gravity were important to our existence I was to find out what the, uh, they play a huge part in our everyday lives. I had an experience in 2006 which led to me, uh, led to information that had a profound effect on my life. While the event itself is irrelevant, what I discovered is extremely important. 
it was revealed to me that what we think about will have a great effect on what actually happens to us in our lives, the good and the bad. We all have thoughts and that inner voice which talks to us. But have you ever stopped to consider what that voice really is and why it's there? I certainly never did, not at least until 2006 when I had my near-death experience. And that's a wake-up call, listen to the voice. So to be quite honest, it meant very little to me. Thoughts were simply just thoughts, and thoughts could make you feel good, bad, or everywhere in between. So why do I mention the universal law of attraction? This again from the book. Well, first, let's look at the origins of the law of attraction and its definition. Now, if you read the rest of the chapter, you'll see that some of what I'm going to talk about here is um, already in the book. Now, there are many books, many books, and some good and some bad about the law of attraction but this particular book i found very useful for me personally um which was thought vibration or the law of attraction in the thought world by william walker atkinson now there's many books that have been led on from this and i'm going to give you a um, um an audio book that i listened to which helped me personally um and also i remember when i was in australia a, a very wealthy gentleman came up to me in australia and gave me a book um, which I'm going to talk about, a book by a uh, an author called James Allen, As a Man Thinketh, was the book, which again had a profound, a profound effect on my life. Now, first of all, can everybody see my screen with um, thought vibration? With Can everyone see that before I move forward? Okay, because Gar said he couldn't write. Everyone can see it. So if you can't see it, you just need to refresh. I'm going to just refresh the screen myself just so you can see it there you go and basically this particular book um talked about um vibrational energy now i'm not going to get into all the science of this because i don't want to confuse everyone there's a lot of you here and you're all going to be at different levels of your understanding of the very universe that we inhabit but i can say that if you understand what they're doing in cern in switzerland which is colliding particles of energy you will understand that human beings are getting a lot closer to understanding why we're here, our purpose, our existence, what makes us, why do certain things happen. And our thoughts are very misunderstood in, in science. And yet the human brain is, again, one of the most misunderstood. It's still studied, but still a misunderstood uh, muscle, for want of a better word, that guides us around this planet. Uh, Tom Williams Often we would talk about the universe and we talk about nature, we talk about life. But he often described his body, he said, well, Gavin, he said, the human body is nothing more than a vessel, a very clever one, to move your consciousness around planet Earth. Now, try and get your head around that, because I, I never could. <laughs> but, but that's Tom, he'd sit there. I remember it very fondly. We'd be out in his conservatory. It'd be belting down with rain, probably sometimes four or five in the morning because he would never sleep. And very often I'd be awake looking at charts and he'd call me in and say, come on, Gav, sit down, make a cup of tea. He'd make a cup of tea and he'd say, right, you know, so he said, you know, the universe is amazing. And he'd come out with these thoughts. And he just one day said, well, he said, I've been thinking about the human body. I'm getting older, he said, but really my consciousness is the same. He said, I'm, I've learned a lot, but... The human body just moves the consciousness around the planet. And I thought, what a great example. Now, one of the things I began to do, uh, and I've written about this in my third book, and in fact, this is probably a good opportunity to read to you um, a chapter from the book, and it's chapter one. This is quite personal to me. I've, I've, I've only ever read this once in a, in, in, a, in a seminar, but I think it sums up where I'm going with trading and investing as well, but where I'm going with life, because I think it's important that this seminar just isn't about picking up a chart and making money. It's about preparing yourself to be successful. And if you can do that, you will you will be successful. It's a universal law. So the chapter, the first chapter of the book is the reason why. And it says the reason why I decided that now was the time to run. Now, I wrote this in 2011. <laughs> My wife's killing me because I, I stopped and I'm glad I did. But the reason why I decided that now was the time to write this book is because of a near-death experience several years ago. Something happened that had a profound effect on me and changed my life dramatically, very much for the better. I do not know where I first heard the term knowledge is power, 
But after my near-death experience, some very strange things began to happen to me that began with me asking some serious questions about why I'm here on this earth and what is my purpose. I cannot remember the circumstances that led me to a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. However, I do remember as I read the book that I realized that for parts of my life, I'd been drifting with no real sense of purpose. I knew the knowledge in this book was extremely powerful, but what I found very difficult to at first accept is that our thoughts can manifest into something real in our lives. It was during a very turbulent time in my life that Napoleon Hill's work or book found its way into my possession. I'd emigrated to the United States of America to start a business called Trade Guider, which I still own with my business partner, Richard Bedell, today. Starting any business is always going to be a challenge, but relocating to a completely different country and learning a new culture as well was the biggest challenge of my life. I remember arriving in Chicago on the evening before Thanksgiving and getting to the apartment we had rented, which was right opposite the Sears Tower, which is now, of course, the Willis Tower, if you know that. It was early evening when I arrived and it was very cold. It had been snowing. As I opened the door to my residence, my new residence, I remember a strong feeling of mixed emotions throwing through me. On one hand, I was extremely excited and looking forward to discovering all the wonderful things I'd heard about America. And on the other hand, doubt was setting in as to whether I'd made the right decision. Looking back, this is one of those times in life that you reach a crossroads and gut instinct kicks in. I knew there was no going back. Within six months, I met my wife, Laura, and we were married the following year. It was during the process of getting my green card that I went through an extremely difficult situation that made me depressed and negative. And by the way, it had nothing to do with Donald Trump, by the way. I'm, I'm most definitely not a negative person. And so this situation what really got me down was the catalyst for what I now realize is my life's destiny and purpose. This is what happened. I'd made an application for my green card. And as part of this process, I had to go a medical exam, pretty standard stuff. Everything was going very well at this point. But then after a few months, I needed to leave the United States to see my son in England, who was six years old at the time. I was advised that I had an application for a green card going through, so I needed a special permit to leave the US. If I left the US without this permit, I would have to I would have been seen to abandon my green card application. And this had cost us a lot in lawyers fees, about 30 grand at that point. And so I made the application for a permit to leave and re-enter the United States. Cut a long story short. 18 months later, I'd still not got the, per per the permit, despite writing numerous letters and making phone calls every week. I was banging my head against a brick wall, trying to make sense of why this was happening to me. No one in the US immigration service seemed to have an answer, and I was stuck in a process that seemed unresolvable. Sound familiar what's happening right now, by the way? Um, combined with this, other negative things were happening to me, and things seemed to be spiraling out of control. The, big, the business began to run out of money, arguments with business partners began, and the final straw was a phone call from my son in England. He asked me why I did not come and see him and said that I did not love him. To hear that over the phone in that situation, I was made to feel powerless, depressed, angry, and frustrated, no, the negative words. I was living a big pity party. All my feelings of resentment, anger, and frustration were manifesting in situations around me, so I needed an answer. It was during that time that Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, and a book called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne were brought to my attention. I do not remember exactly how, but I do know that at the time I began to read them, I was at a big low point in my life and needed answers. I remember to this day the moment I began to read The Secret. It was at my health club, the East Bank Club in Chicago, made famous because Barack Obama was also a member, as well as Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey. It was a hot summer's day in July. I can actually remember it right now. Uh, and I was outside the pool and I began to read. As I read each chapter, I began to question much of what was being discussed in the book. Hence, I was closed minded, I should add there. Several times I was tempted to stop reading, to say to myself, what a load of rubbish. But something kept me going. My inner voice was playing games. It was a mini battle in my head. One side saying this information is rubbish. The other side saying, persevere, you will be rewarded. Luckily for me, that side that said persevere and you will be rewarded won through. And the book that I'm writing here was the result of that winning battle. In fact, the first book to publish was Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money. Initially, my greatest difficulty was trying to grasp the concept that thoughts are things that can manifest into your life experience. I could see from my own experience that when I was negative and down, I seemed to be getting more of the same. And when I was feeling great and positive, I got more of the good things and I felt great. But, I, but could I control or at least influence what I was getting? Is there a universal law that applies to us all? 
In books throughout history, the subject of the law of attraction has been discussed. In fact, the book that inspired The Secret was a book published in 1910 called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wattles. The Science of Getting Rich preceded similar financial success books such as The Master Key System by Charles F. Harnock, uh, published in 1912. In the hundred years since its publication, Wattles' book has gone through many editions and remains in print from more than one publisher. In essence, law of attraction refers to the idea that thoughts influence chance. The law of attraction argues that thoughts, both conscious and unconscious, can affect things outside the head just through, like, through motivation, but by other means. Sorry, let me repeat that. Not just through motivation, but by other means. The law of attraction says that which is like unto itself is drawn. When I first began to find this information, I was sent an email by one of our customers at Trade Guider. In the email, which was thanking us for teaching him to trade and invest using a method called VSA, Volume Spread Analysis, he quoted an old Chinese proverb. I now know that the, what was happening to me as this information was received was in, the pro, was in the proverb. You might find this as well. When the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. At that moment in my life, I was ready, and I hope that you're ready to open your mind to the wonderful opportunities and connections that are all around you right now, if you tune into them. I will teach you how to tune in and focus your energy to get positive results in your life right now. So I completed the book, The Secret, and took me only two days to read completely. It was a Sunday night, and so the next question I asked myself is, what do I really want and need right now? Of course, the obvious answers I'm sure you will think about would be more money, a bigger car, a bigger house. But in that moment, none of those things were important, as being able to, lay, to leave the United States to see my son in England was much more important. I have always been good at visualizing things in my mind's eye, which is an important part of using law of attraction. However, as I learned, there are other things that need to be done if you want to get positive results. Gratitude for what you have now, even if you're going through a really tough time or a very dark period of your life, is very important. I was going through a very tough time, and initially, found being grateful somewhat difficult as my perception of my world was very negative at that moment. I remember that Sunday evening switching on the television and I watched a program about the famine in Africa and the struggles of human beings to just survive. I watched as the documentary explained how difficult it was to get to get fresh drinking water and how some children would not get a meal for days. I then looked at the wonderful apartment I was in. I looked out at the Chicago city view from my window and I watched as my wife cooked us dinner from our fully stocked fridge and at that moment I knew what gratitude was and I actually began to cry. I went to bed that evening and decided it was time to make some changes and positive ones at that. One half of me was very excited at this new challenge and yet the other negative side was nagging at me with that inner voice, doubting and thinking this has got to be a waste of time, it's all rubbish. I had nothing to lose at this point. I was frustrated and negative. I knew there was only one thing that was going to stop that. It was me. I had to take massive action and change my direction. I knew that the knowledge I'd been given was the key. Now, all I had to do was use it and prove to myself that it had value. Little did I know that I had started a chain of events that would change my life in many positive ways that was not, uh, has not stopped and keeps going. The next morning, my waking thought was of my son in England and that I really needed to, the documentation to leave the US. Started my day not in the usual way, which was to worry about the day ahead and thinking of issues that were consuming me. No, this day I thought of all the things I had to be grateful for. I decided a good start would be to write them down on paper and take a look. Amazing, I was up to 20 and still going. This committal to writing had a profound effect on me because it allowed me to focus in the moment. I realised I'd been given gifts at birth that I took for granted. I was happily married, had a great place to live, great social and professional network, and much to look forward to. So why did I feel like this? I was attracting negative situations without being conscious that I was doing uh, it, as I now know. So as you read this book, I only ask three things of you if you want to get the very best from knowledge. Your mind is like a parachute. It is best used when it is open. Please open your mind and see what happens. Miracles exist, but we must create them first. Have faith. As the great Steve Jobs said, you can, can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. And we've already read this, your gut, destiny, karma, etc. Believe in yourself. You do have unlimited power if you know how to channel your energy in the right direction. And the book that I'm writing is there to give you the strategies to do it. Now, I'll tell you that after waking up that morning, and this is in the next chapter, which I'm not going to read, um, 
I woke up with the process of gratitude, went to work as I normally do, and I had a really good day. And things that were causing me issues started to just fall into place. But I kept asking in my mind for the previous few days, I really need to get my paperwork to, to leave the US. And I'd written to a very famous senator at the time who was uh, in Chicago by the name of Barack Obama. Some of you will have heard of him. And lo and behold, I got back home that day and the, um, this, this, what I'm telling you is exactly how it happened. I walked in the door of my apartment and Alan, our doorman, was there. He said, oh, Gav, he said, the um, post lady's big. She couldn't fit on all the post in your, in your box. So I've got some here. It's completely full. I said, what are you talking about? I'm not expecting anything. Anyway, I went to the box and opened it. And as I opened it, all these letters were there from the U.S. government. Right? There was about 12. And Alan had another three, and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? But a very strange feeling happened, and I, I can only describe it as a tingling in the back of my neck, a sensation where I thought something has materialized here, but I couldn't figure it out. And I went up to the apartment in a daze is the best description I can give it to you. And as I opened the letters, the first letter I opened was my permit to leave the country, first letter. The second one was a repeat of the first letter. So it was a state, they just sent it again. The third letter I opened was a third one. So there's three of them. The fourth letter was a, 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 um, a confirmation that I got an appointment for my green card, which should take six months after. It came the same day. The fifth one said the green card application was a 20-year, not a 10-year. And then the sixth letter explained why the delay was they lost my medical records because they were stuck to the back of an envelope and they found them that uh, the morning previously. Did Barack Obama have anything to do with it? No idea. But I can tell you, I was out of the country the following week with my son in England. And from that lesson, I began to realize that there must have been something I did because 18 months previously, I was living in misery. And that's what made me open my eyes to this law, the law of attraction. And it works just as well when you're actually starting to trade. If you've started the day in the right way, if you've prepared properly, if you've got your office organized properly, if you've got your trading desk organized properly, if you've read your trading plan, I'm not even going to ask if you've got a trading plan. I'm just going to give you one ready for Wednesday. And the phrase law of attraction, it's actually in Wikipedia. It's um, let's define it. Law of attraction is used widely by new thought writers, refers to the idea that thoughts influence chance. The law of attraction argues that thoughts, both conscious and unconscious, can affect things outside the head, not just through motivation, but by other means. The law of attraction says that which is like unto itself is drawn. The law of attraction became widely popular after the release of The Secret, a 2006 film by Australian television writer and producer Rhonda Byrne. Uh, Byrne followed up the film with a best-selling book of the same title, which of course I read, and appeared on a series of talk shows in 2007. So there are certain laws that are generally accepted by human beings. I could list a lot of them, but I'm not going to list them. Um, let me ask you, actually, because I can add them to this, uh, this slide afterwards. So let me just go back a second. So let me ask you, what universal laws do you think are generally accepted by human beings? Yes, Don, I am. I'm sending a recording out. Uh, Michael, I'm going to give you the list of books at the end that I think will help you. So what laws can you think of that are generally accepted as universal laws by human beings. Just anything you can think of. Law of gravity I've got there. Yeah, that's a normal one. Yeah. Yeah, there's a good one there. The law of reciprocation or reciprocity. That's a good one. <laughs> Breaking a mirror. <laughs> it's bad, yeah. What you think about becomes your reality. Yeah, the law of supply and demand, I've got that there. The law of thermodynamics, that is a law. It is. The law of karma. The law of creation. See, we're getting good now. That's it. Murphy's law. Well, yeah, I'm coming to that. Diminishing returns. <laughs> the law is you will always pay taxes and die. <laughs> so, oh, everyone's typing it in. I might as well get under there. was one there that says sod's law. I had a, I had a slide on that. I took it off. Um, Yeah, Michael says, if anything bad can happen, it will. Not necessarily true. Because if you think anything good can happen, it can also happen too. It's the complete opposite. Uh, Paul's got a good one. You get back what you give. That is true. You give out caring, good, kind information, or you just could be kind to other people. Expect nothing in return. The law of karma gives it back to you. That's true. 
Murphy's Law, Sod's Law, yeah. Groundhog seeing his shadow. <laughs> That's a law, yeah. So we've got more. Yeah. <laughs> Some good ones here. You put 12 socks in the wash, you get 11 back. <laughs> Very good. What goes around comes around. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Love is the vibration of the universe. That is a law. Yeah, love vibration. Absolutely. So let's talk about a law you didn't talk about, the law of manifestation. Now, manifestation is actually something that's present every single moment that you are on this planet. And it's been studied by science. It's been studied by religions. It's been studied by individuals. In fact, in the if you go to China, you see this sign, the yin and yang. Um, when I looked at this, this sign, you know, the earth is round, this is circular, and often this is seen as black, this is particularly in red here, and in the, the red you've got a bit of white, in the white you've got a bit of red, and this is energy form, it flows, energy flows. One of the things I personally definitely believe in is that we have access to knowledge if we choose to access it, and it's all around us at all times. Um, it's often referred to as the higher power, as God, whatever you want to call it in religion, there's many, many scriptures that talk about this, this power, and it's there. No doubt about that in my mind. Everyone I know, uh, who, who, whether they're religious or not, there's a few people who say, I've met, so well, there's nothing. It's just I'm just here walking around. Everyone has different belief systems. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying you need to change your belief systems, but you can prove to yourself that certain things that you do can make your life and those around you better. But the trouble with manifestation, as I found, is, is, is for 18 months, if you feel bad, if you feel negative, if you feel angry, if you feel frustrated, right, the universe doesn't know that's not what you want. You almost attract more of it. Few people were saying here, they were typing in, well, it, when it's bad, it gets worse. That's true. That is absolutely correct. If you're in a pity party and you're in a negative hole and you wake up next morning feeling like crap, you've got more crap coming. Sorry. That I can't help you with. What I can help you with is changing your thought process to create and manifest good things. Because you mean you can see here, it all, you know, I don't want to exercise. I, I'm going to take a nap. I'm too tired during the day. I'm going to get in shape. You get all these negative things thrown at you. But actually, there's also a lot of positives. Because the universe doesn't recognize good and bad. It doesn't care. It, it, it responds to what you want. You go and look at anything in your life. If you've been really positive about something, you've really enjoyed a job, you wanted a pay rise, you wanted a bonus, very often you've got it. If you hate your job, you hate this, you hate that, you don't get a pay rise, you probably get a pay cut, and everything goes wrong. That's, that's exactly how it has to work. It's the process of manifestation, and it works the same in the stock market, and it works the same in Forex and futures, I'm afraid. You have to be mentally ready to receive what you're going to get in the financial markets. And if you're not, you're going to fail. And you'll find that on Wednesday, when we do the live trading, there is a preparation process that has to be followed. If you, pre if you prepare properly, you're preparing for battle. And again, a lot of people, when they want to manifest things, it's material things. I often ask people, what is it you want? The first thing they say, money. But then I said, you know, so it's really interesting. Why didn't you say health? Oh, well, I'm healthy. But you don't know that. Look at Steve Jobs. Yeah, if you asked him when he was diagnosed with cancer, what do you want, money or health? He'd say, well, health. But he couldn't buy that. Couldn't go out and just purchase some more health. As I'll read to you shortly, his final words are very interesting. Money isn't everything, but of course, that's what most people focus on, is material goods, which are important. Don't get me wrong. And it's a good thing that you want those. Nothing wrong with it. But there are other things that need to go with it. So what are the four keys? of creating wealth uh, and again other things in your life well first of all you've got to think about it the word dream not sure i like the word dream because a dream can be associated with la la land if that's the right word i think the word dreaming is visualizing it so i know what i want i wanted to be a fund manager a few years ago and tom told me i would and i have i wanted to move back to the united kingdom put my kids in private school i've done it I wanted to drive a Mercedes. I've got a Mercedes Jeep. I've got it. I mean, I've done those things. I've visualized them and I've got them. But there are other things I want bigger, but you've got to visualize them. Then once you've seen them in your mind's eye, which is very important, the mind's eye is an important thing, you've got to talk about what you want. And you've got to, and I use the word speak, you've got to write them down. You've got to commit those things to writing. In fact, I've got several um, stuff around my office here 
where I've written down things that I want, I've also said, if I don't want something, I'm not going to focus on it. But then this is the most difficult part of the law of attraction. You've got to allow it. And most people feel guilty. They say, well, I want a bigger house. Oh, I can't because look at the television today. These poor people over there in Syria and that, they haven't got anything. I can't have it. That's not true. Everyone's different. If you, you can have what you want, you really can. And I'm, I'm proof of it. You know, I've gone from a policeman to a fund manager and I've traveled the world. I've been to every country I wanted to go to. I've still got more I want to visit. I've met thousands of people all over the world. I'm truly blessed. And that's something that I've chosen. But all of these things are how I've got there and they're how you're going to get there. So I've already asked that question, so I don't need to, to, to go back on that one. Um, the law of attraction formula. There is a formula. OK, so you've got words in your mind. So you, your inner voice speaks. What is it you require? What is it you want? Again, with these, I often find it's very important to put them on paper. Then you've got your thought process, right, which is you're thinking about what you want. You're visualizing it in your mind's eye. It could be a winning trade. It could be. I, I, I tell you that many times when I do live trading competitions, an hour before I start, I've already visualized the trade I'm going to take. Now, sometimes it doesn't materialize. Many times it did. In my book, I show it a trade I took at the New York Traders Expo. I'd visualized for hours and hours and hours what was going to happen. And when it appeared in front of me, it was disconcerting, but it was also reassuring because I knew I was OK. And you could, you know, when someone talk about vibes, right? I, I especially, um, you know, you go into a to a room and someone says, "Oh, that, that person has given off some bad vibes," and you hear them moaning and complaining. That's vibrational energy. That's all it is. That's what a vibe is. So when someone says, "Well, they give off a good vibe," someone's got a good vibe. It's a good vibrational energy. It means you feel good around them. You like what they're saying. You like, you know, you go up to them. They they they, they give you a good feeling about being with them. And people come out. Oh, that guy's got a great vibe, or that girl's got a great vibe. But then you get the negative people sit there, they go into a party, oh, they talk about this and the politics of that and why they hate their job. And you go, oh, my God, I don't want to be around people like that. They call bad vibes, same thing. And then, of course, results, right? Once you've got results coming in, you can see that the words and the thoughts and the vibes that you've put out are giving you the results. And the formula starts to repeat itself consistently. And at any point, if it's not working, the human brain can reset itself and start again. Uh, Mark, I've already talked a little bit about the, the trading. If you've missed the beginning bit, OK, we talked a little bit about the, um, the chart. But most of the trading side here that I'm going to apply this to will be in the live market on Wednesday. This is only part one and two. The main bit on Wednesday is when we get to the actual charting. I am going to do some charts at the end because I've got some stuff to show you. All right. But again, this is important. I didn't just get successful from reading charts. I applied a lot of what I'm showing you to that particular skill. And I know it's the most important part because the people that fail, uh, who've, who've become customers or people who maybe who've got charts and look at charts, if they don't follow some of these results, they fail. So does it work with wealth creation? Most people who trade want to create wealth and it does absolutely create. Okay. Olga says, how do we change our money story? Well, you write down what you want and what you don't focus on what you, if you're not getting what you want, it means you're focusing on what you don't want. So I know this, and I'm going to give you some stuff to go and do some research on, by the way, which will help you with this. So don't worry. When I look at the end, I'm going to give you some information. We're going to finish here in about an hour, probably slightly less. I'm going to give you some stuff that you can go and look at. It's only a couple of hours, right? But it will put you, Olga, in exactly the right place. Is how do I change the story in my mind to, to get what you want? Because you see, I've done it. I mean, I didn't turn up at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the biggest exchange in the world, and hope that they'd invite me in to trade with my hedge fund software. I visualized it a month, months before it happened. And then I made it happen. And I didn't make it. it the universe made it happen because I got a phone call out the blue having thought about it with the opportunity. Now, I can't say 100%, oh, well, that must be because I thought about it, but every time I've done something like that, something works. So I just go with the flow. I don't argue with the fact that law of attraction's there. I just use it. Now, I mentioned this in the early book. Can anyone here tell me if they've heard of the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? How many of you have heard of this book, 
think of um, some of you have said no so quite a few of you going of course i have of course i have there's a lot of people typing in no so you know th you know that's good if you've said no you're perfect this is great you're going to have a great great journey if you've said yes that's the reason you're still here because you know that the information in that book which i also i have um another book by napoleon hill which has only recently been and now i bet many of you haven't got this book how many uh, of you have got the book by napoleon hill called outwitting the devil now let me just ask that which is his latest book which has only just been published like a couple of years ago oh actually okay a few of you got it but it's a good book outwitting the devil it's an interview with the devil <laughs> it was very yeah yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting book in that, in that it wasn't published in its day because it was very controversial, as most things are, especially when it deals with anything religious. But the message in the book is that the human mind has great power if you harness it. That's the best word. I was looking for the word. If you harness it, it's a great book. So I've got a little thing I'm going to, I'm going to give you, a couple of little handouts that, 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 that I'm going to give you in a minute. I'm going to put them in the chat area. But... There are more than six steps to creating wealth, actually, that Napoleon Hill discussed. But these are the top six. You've got to have a definite description in your mind. If you want money, how much do you want? And is it realistic? I mean, if you're earning 250000 a year, at the time when I made a statement how much money I wanted, I was earning half a million a year at the time. And I knew that it would be realistic to turn that into two and a half million a year if I did certain things. Now, everyone's different. Someone who's earning 20,000 a year or 30,000 a year and they suddenly want to jump to 50 million a year, they won't believe that they can do it. So you've got to work out in your own mind what you believe is atta attainable and then put an amount on it. But always think bigger. So if you think I want 100 a year, 100 grand, maybe call it 200 because, you know, you, the, the universe is, is abundant. It doesn't care about the size of them. I mean, Jim Carrey, how, you, you all know Jim Carrey, okay, the, the, the famous actor. He he talked about, um, he's one, one of the, he wanted to get a major role in Hollywood. And the major role that he wanted, well, first of all, he thought about the money, $10 million. He thought, I'm going to get a role that's going to pay me $10 million. True story, this. And he went about doing a few small roles and stuff like that, but he always had in his mind, one day, I'm going to get a role, $10 million. Right now, this is what happened. He got a phone call from a Hollywood studio to go and audition for a, a part called The Mask. Some of you will have heard of that movie. And after going through his auditions, they called him in and said, we want you to do it. And he said, well, you know, and they made him laugh. He said, no, I've got my price. This is this is what I want. And a week later, he opened his uh, post and there was a check for $10 million for his upfront fee for The Mask. Okay, so that's you go check that. So work out the definite amount of money. Now, what will you give in return for the money you desire? Right? You can ask to win the lottery, maybe you'll get lucky. You can ask for it to just turn up on your doorstep one day, maybe you get lucky, but I doubt it. There must be something you're prepared to give. It could be your time, it could be your knowledge, it could be anything. But there, there, there has to be something you'll give in return. It might be that you're going to go and help. I mean, there's many things I've done to give back to the community that I live in or to the people in the world that I encounter. Establish a time. How long do you want this to happen? Now, be realistic. For me to become a hedge fund manager, I knew it was going to take longer than six months when I wrote that down. I wrote that down three years ago. So I knew it, I knew there was things that were going to take time, like, for instance, getting registered, getting the background checks, all those. I knew those things were going to take time. So I said three years ago, within three years, which happened to be 2016, I want to be establishing a hedge fund. That's what I said in my mind, establishing it. And that's what's happened. Once you create the plan, start implementing it. Don't wait. You could literally don't wait. Start today. Don't make excuses. Oh, I'll tell you what, I listen to that seminar. I'll do it tomorrow. Everyone does it tomorrow and then it never happens. Start doing it. If you, were, if you want to trade and make money, you have to have a trading plan. I don't care if you say, well, no, I don't need a plan. I'll just press a button. I'll do, I mean, if, it, if I see a, a signal, I'll just go long. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You've got to have a structure. You're, you're, if you're going to trade and invest in the markets, you're trading against some of the cleverest people in the world. So you've got to have a, a strategy to go in there. 
this is something I really initially found difficult, affirming, affirmations, positive affirmations. I've got a, an app on my iPhone, and that app is Positive Affirmations, it's called. And I look at them every day, and on my Alexa, okay, and actually, I don't know, let's, let's just try this. I'll, I don't know if this will work, but we'll try it. I've got the Alexa. Alexa, let's see if it actually is plugged in. Yeah, Alexa, inspire me. Here's some inspirational words from Ellen Watts. Now you see, living like this plant is something spontaneous. In Chinese, the word for nature is zilang, which means that which happens of itself, not under any control of an outside boss. And so, you stop the spontaneous flowering of nature cold. If you tell it, you must do it. It's like saying to someone, you must love me. Well, that's ridiculous. If I were to ask my wife, darling, do you really love me? And she says, I am trying my best to do so. That's not the answer I want. I want her to say, I can't help loving you. I love you so much, I can eat you. And that's what the, the plant feels in growing. It doesn't feel that it must grow. It's not under orders. It's not a military chain of command. It does this spontaneously. So that when you try to command the spontaneous process, you stop it. So there you have it. And I have all the different inspirational things on Alexa. I better be careful because I've just heard several people say, Gavin, when you said that, it fired up my Alexa. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyway, if you go and um, if you've got that particular product and you open the skill, uh, there is a skill there which gives you the these daily um, affirmations from very famous people. There's Michael Jordan, Tony Robbins. Very good. And then once you've written your affirmation, what you want, and you write it down, read it. <laughs> Don't just sit there. Look, read it. What do you want? Ask yourself each day, what do I want? And shout it. Look in the mirror and say it. As though you're talking to yourself. Say, this is what I want. And eventually the mind will create it for you because you've asked for it. Now, how many of you heard of this book? The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wattles. Yeah, that was Alan Watts. That's right. Uh, the name of the app on Alexa, I can tell you while we're looking at this. It's a skill, by the way. It's called a skill on the, on the app. Um, let me just give you this while I'm finding that. I want to give you this... Um, link in YouTube. This is actually the audio book of the science of getting rich, which is now out of copyright. And this you can keep. I've just posted it in the room there. Can you can you all see that? It's a very good book. Okay, now again, that's quite a long, it's about a two hour um, book there. But it's very, very worthwhile listening to very worthwhile indeed. It will make a big difference to you because this was the original book that Rhonda Byrne actually um, used as the basis for the secret that she wrote. And it's a very scientific approach about wealth creation. Very useful if, again, if you're trading or investing. Yeah, and Gillian says there's another one called The Science of Being Well. Similar thing. So a consistent theme with Wattles is his insistence on using our brains and our own thoughts to bring about changes in our lives. In many ways, his ideas were revolutionary for his times. At the same time, you can find similar sentiments in the Bible, the Quran, the teachings of Buddha, etc. Everything works under the same laws, yesterday, today, and forever. Wattles is adamant that we create our own lives. It doesn't happen if we sit on our backside waiting for the golden fruit to fall in our, our laps. And the Alexa app there is just called Inspire Me. Uh, is the Alexa app there, and it's in the UK. I don't know if they've got it in the US, but they but they have. So Wallace Wattle says that the scientific use of thought consists in forming a clear and distinct mental image of what you want, in holding fast to the purpose to get what you want, 
and in realizing with grateful faith that you do get what you want. Just think about that. The scientific use of thought consists in forming a clear and distinct mental image of what you want, in holding fast to the purpose to get what you want, and in realizing with grateful faith, as discussed by Steve Jobs, that you do get what you want. But there's something else you should add there. You can also get what you don't want. So you've got to focus. I talk about this in my book. Visualization has become a very important part of my life. Very important to the point that each morning I make an effort to think about what I'm grateful for. At the end of each day, I review all the great things that have happened to me. If I've had something negative happen, I tend to say, what did I learn from that? Not, I'm really angry about it. I don't go to bed with anger or resentment. Not for many years have I done that. When I did before, you sit there lying in the pillow and you're feeling angry about who did what to you at work and what happened there. It's nonsense. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. So, as I said, I, I, in my book I talk about this. Let me just um, stop the flickering there for a second. Bear with me. That should be better. So, I had a very powerful thought that at some point in the future, this was in 2007, I'd be trading live in front of a large audience and I'd make a winning trade and explain all the principles from VSA as they were happening. And this would result in several new customers joining Trade Guide. One of you is actually in this room who was at this particular seminar. As time went on, I began to play out in my mind's eye, if that's the right word, or just visualize exactly what I'd be wearing, what the trade would look like and what would happen as I executed the trade. And I consistently thought that. Then in December of 2009, I got a phone call from the, um, the Traders Expo. Would I go to New York in February and trade live in a competition? And I did. It's in my book at the New York Traders Challenge. And there was the setup. My favorite one, actually. It was a shakeout followed by a test, then a rally away from the test, followed by a test in a rising market, sign of strength 30, which I took and I made money. And I was able, at the end of that, hundreds of people watched, came rushing up, and I, I couldn't believe it because not only did I feel comfortable in that moment, I wasn't nervous. I knew the trade was coming. I was dressed exactly like I imagined, which was a trade guide, a white shirt, as you'll see here, with, my, with the logo on it. I had those made up, a pair of black trousers, and I felt completely at ease because I felt prepared. Because I felt prepared. And that's, and that's important in trading. If you're going to trade... We're going to invest money. Be prepared like a Boy Scout. Be prepared and you will succeed. So self-limiting beliefs. Let's talk to finish off with why is it retail traders? Let's get back onto the trading track a bit. Why is it retail traders losing the markets? And they say between 85 and 90 percent of retail traders or well, up to 90 can lose in the market. There must be a reason. The market has to have losers. If everyone in the markets made money, there wouldn't be a market. It's a competition. It's a, one of the biggest competitions, if not the biggest competition in the whole world. But it has to have losers. And I don't want you, any one of you in this room, to be a loser anymore. That's the purpose of this event. And the purpose of Wednesday is to show you don't have to be. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So a self-limiting belief in anything in life often starts with these words. I cannot. I will not. It does not. I'm not sure. I doubt. Maybe. I don't know. It's impossible. I'm afraid. Yeah. Look at that. I love that picture. If that's a seven, if that's a seven. <laughs> Great picture. Yeah, yeah. Michael just said they vibrate fear. That's exactly what happens. Exactly what happens. They put out the fear, the negativity, and the universe will respond with say, if you can't, you can't. If you won't, you won't. Absolutely true. However, I've met a lot of positive people in my life. In fact, many more positives than negative people. And the reason is because like-minded like people attract like-minded people. So I'm very fortunate. I, I, I associate with some very successful wealthy people and some very successful not wealthy people, but still happy. And they all have the same common thing. This is what they say to themselves every single day they wake up. I can. I can become a fund manager. Yep. I can write my third book. Yep, definitely. I will write that third book. I'm sitting there kicking myself. I'm doing it now. I'm a winner. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. What's the question? I don't know, but the answer is yes. I am sure. 
Definitely, definitely I can do it. Now, if you said to somebody like, um, Tom used a lovely analogy. He said, do you know something, Gavin? Can you imagine, he said, being in the field of a battle going 300 years and you've got one of the big kings, say King, King Henry or one of the kings, and the prince comes up and the, um, he says, sire, your troops are 14 miles away on the, uh, the other hill over there and they're waiting for instructions for battle. Um, what should I tell them? He said, well, we'll have to send a horse. That's going to take an hour and a half to get there. I oh, said, don't worry, sire. In a few hundred years time, we'll be able to speak over the airwaves and the air will carry your voice. He would have laughed. He'd have probably called him an absolute nutter. But we now know we have radio waves. In fact, right in front of me here, I have a marine radio, which I sometimes listen to. And of course, that's a voice coming over the airwaves. Look at the Internet right now. I'm talking into a computer in New Forest, talking to all of you. So don't ever say can't. Steve Jobs never said can't when he said, I'm going to invent a phone that plays music. and that. He never said can't. So don't you say can't. Anything's possible. So why is it so many traders and investors will lose money in the financial markets? They don't have a plan. I'm going to give you a plan. I'm not going to read it to you. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put it in the chat area. It is my personal trading plan. And I'm going to put it in there right now. And this is my, what I call smart trading plan, meaning it's the trading plan I use for the, the fund as well. And you should be able to see this any second going into the, the chat. I've, I've tried this a couple of times, so let's see if this actually works. Um, here we go. All right, so tell me this. You should be able to see this in your um, very shortly in your in your chat. Sorry, in your um, download area of the window. You should be able to see it now. Yeah, Robert, I haven't read that, but if you can send me the details, I'd love to have a look at it. You should see it in now. It's in there in the chat area. If for any reason you haven't got it, you can email Laura at tradeguider.com, but it's definitely in there. It's in the, um, there's an area there that says handouts, and it's in there. It's in the handouts area of the, uh, oh, a few of you said you don't see it. It's definitely there because other people are downloading it right now. Yeah, people are saying it's there. I, I don't know why for some people it's not. It must be the um, the internet. But whatever, don't worry. Just email my wife, Laura. She has a copy of that trading plan. She can send it to you. So there's the trading plan. Go and take a look at it. It's about 12 pages. It's detailed, but it's there. Losing traders do different things on different trades. They're completely inconsistent. And what causes that inconsistency, unfortunately, it's the lack of the plan. I mean, it's a bit like running a business. Fail to plan, plan to fail, they say. Very true. Losing traders don't believe in their strategy, and that is very, very key. You've got to believe in what you're doing. It's, if, you, if you believe in volume spread analysis, which many of you do and some of you are just finding out, you'll know why weakness appears as the market moves up. You'll know why buying happens as the market moves down. Remember, your brain is a very powerful tool, but when you use it correctly, you'll produce outstanding results. And I mean outstanding. From my experience, the losing traders are acting more like gamblers. It's, it, it's, it's their, you know, they're, they're opening a $1,000 account and, and, and risking $800 in a trade and stuff like that. They'll never win. They'll never win. A card counter that goes to Vegas, a card counter, puts the odds in their favor and that's why if they find them they, they ban them or do worse to them as a retail trader you can put the odds in your favor if you study for a few hours each week it doesn't take much you've got to be prepared to study and make money the holy grail of trading if anyone's about to develop this and release it it's trade guider but i still say it's not holy grail the brain is still required we've developed a piece of software called Smart Center Pro. Many people are now using it, funds, banks, looking and finding trades in futures, forex, and stocks. And I traded with it at the CME. This is as close as I think we're going to get to finding 
where a trade setup happens. But I have to say, I still have to press the trigger myself at the moment. Once we've got it automated, that's a different story altogether. That would be a holy grail if it just continues to, to churn out profitable trades. We'll see. But, you know, as I've said here in this slide, you know, the smart money understand how the group or the herd think. You mustn't think. You, can everyone see my screen, by the way? A couple of people. Oh, there you go. Sorry, there it is. It's because I had to drop it in. So there we go. So that was the previous one. Losing traders, think and act like gamblers, okay, um, which I've already studied. And then there, losing traders, looking for the holy grail. Again, I'll just repeat what I just said there. Ultimately, the person that's going to make you successful is you. Yes, we give you tools at Trade Guide. Yes, we'll give you the training. Yes, we'll support you. Yes, we'll give you live trading rooms. We're doing all of those things. You have it within you to make it. Losing traders, most often, use so many different systems and indicators, they never know what the chart is actually telling them. The chart never lies if you know how to use it and read it. I should say read it collect correctly. That's the word. That's what on Wednesday we're going to drill into you. Chart reading, chart reading. Today is preparation. Preparation. Understanding you is going to make you successful. Not me. Don't follow what I do. Don't follow what Tom or anyone else did. It's you. You have to tailor your trading strategy to your personality. And this is where most companies go completely wrong. They try to sell you a package that fits them or fits what they're doing and tells you to follow it. It's like following a trader that trades and makes money trading a $10 million account and tries to teach everyone else to follow to do the same thing. They can't and they lose money. And I know several examples of that. You are the key. You are the key. Not not Gavin, not VSA. You have to learn it. It doesn't take long. But once you've got volume spread analysis and the Wyckoff method as part of your trading arsenal, you are becoming smart money. You're becoming a smart trader. This is a problem for many traders. They're undercapitalized. Worse than that, they're risking money they cannot afford to lose. Yeah, it, well, it's interesting. Ed just typed in there. I'm new to trading. If I dedicate myself 100% to success, what's the minimum account um, I should start out with? Well, that depends what you're trading because very highly leveraged instruments like futures really require a minimum of $5,000 US minimum to, to trade successfully. In stocks, if you're going to take long-term investment, you want about $25,000 in the account. I've got much bigger accounts, but you can successfully invest with a 25 grand account. You can use much smaller accounts if you're trading options. Now, that's a, a very interesting strategy. My colleague Danny has written a book on this. You can trade with much less money and much less risk. Um, and in fact, Danny's book, um, I can't give it to you because it's on sale, but Danny's book um, is an absolute masterpiece. In fact, it's here. It's called Supercharger Trading and Investing Account Using the Wyckoff VSA Method. In that book, he's got the option strategies that I'm using for the fund, and that is suitable for someone even with a small account of, say, one $2,000 trading stocks using options. The whole strategy is in that book. That is available from the Trade Guider website now in the book section if you want to go and have a look at it. Oh, I highly recommend that as a good place to start. If you're thinking with a small account, you want to get going, you want to understand chart reading, read that book. Read that book. I mean, it's simpler than my book. My book's a bit more advanced. But Danny's book, it's Danny Younes is his name. Uh, it's on the Trade Guider site. Very, very good book for those of you that are thinking of starting. So remember, you've got to have money management skills. That's very important. Yeah, Michael was talking about Weiss Wave uh, indicator. I don't use that anymore. I've got something slightly different. But if you're having trouble using it, contact David. Because, again, we've done a lot of work with David. In fact, I believe if you look at the YouTube video uh, that we did with David, it explains how to use that for you, Michael. Uh, it does actually explain that as a YouTube video where I've actually used it with David. About three years old, but it's still there. So winning traders are traders with discipline, belief, lack of fear, and they've got knowledge. That's the key to it, knowledge of how the markets work. They also know they can never be 100% right, and they get out of losing positions quickly. See it as a small business loss. It's not a financial disaster. If you look at my trading plan, you'll see I don't risk any more than 2% of my capital in any one trade, Okay, which is very important. Okay? So, again, losses are part of doing business with the market. If you can't 
suffer losses. If it upsets you, get out of this business because you will not be involved with this business if you don't have a loss. If you can't handle it, you shouldn't be a trader. Losing traders do not understand how the markets work, often believing that price moves markets. It doesn't. The force of supply and demand and the trading of smart money cause price to move. Winning rage, uh, traders such as Tim Raymond, who I talked about earlier, have studied Tom Williams' work on how the markets truly operate, and that helped him demystify the markets and be a two-time winner of the World Cup Trading Championship, Trading Real Money. Go and have a look at that, that course that I've given you. Read the article from Tim if you're sceptical, if you want to find out more. My total risk while lead would be 6% in multiple trades on the account at any one position. Maximum 6%. Waleed, no more, no more. Losing traders can get confused by all the different slick sales out there of the systems that claim if you buy our software, you've got 80% accuracy. It's nonsense. No one knows what your accuracy is other than you. Okay, so everyone trades differently. Okay, you can put 100 people in a room with the same software, the same book, and the same instruction manual. They'll all do different things. That's because they're human beings, right, which is why... You know, people out there say, well, there's this trader here that's got 85% accuracy and you can mirror what he does. You try it, you'll lose every time. It's rubbish. You are the key to your success. You have an opportunity if you buy and get involved with an educational company, which is what we are like Trade Guide and VSA, to have software, to have the knowledge imparted to you to do it. But I'll say again, you hold the key, which is why I'm going through this presentation today, because in order for you to make it work, you've got to have this background preparation. If you don't, you might as well give up. There is background preparation needed by you. You've got to put a bit of effort into life. Effort versus result. Effort versus result. Effort versus result. You put in some effort, you get results. Yeah, I'm, Greg, I've put the trading plan into the chat area, but what I'll also do, I'll put my wife's um, email address up afterwards, and if you couldn't download it from this, then you can email her and she'll forward it to you. Um, so again, it's down to you. I don't have to show you examples of the herd. I mean, look at gold, where everyone bought at the top and then got killed. I mean, it was a terrible example of how the, the herd operate. How do you present yourself or prevent yourself from being a herd trader? Understand the price charts and understand that the markets are rigged. Go and look at that video of Michael, um, of Flat the Flash Boys author. Yeah? Go and have a look at it. Michael Lewis. Discipline. Now, this is one of my favorite comments from Warren Buffett, but it is true. Fortunately, you don't have to be a genius to be a successful investor. As Berkshire Hathaway, chief and investor extraordinaire, Warren Buffett said in a 1999 interview with Business Week, quote, success in investing doesn't correlate with IQ once you're above the level of 25. Once you have ordinary intelligence, what you need is the temperament to control the urges to get other people into trouble in investing. It's true that not everyone is gifted with Buffett's calm, cool demeanor, but challenging yourself to avoid your own worst instincts will help you reach your financial goals. So what makes winners? Yes, Gary, it has been recorded and I'll send the recording out afterwards. Belief. Belief we've talked about today. It's very important. Visualization. See those winners. Cut losers. Don't hold on to losing trades, hoping and praying they're going to turn. If it's not working, it's not working. Be contrarian. Think as an individual, not a member of the herd. You're the wolf, not the sheep. Develop your chart reading skills. That's what we at Trade Guider teach you. We will turn you into an expert chart reader, and it doesn't take long now. We think it's less than 20 hours following our structure. Discipline. You've got to have some discipline. If you're an undisciplined person, you've got to become disciplined like I did. A lot of the traders I meet, a bit like me, it's spiritual people. I'm a spiritual person. You know, I wouldn't class myself as necessarily massively religious, but I'm definitely spiritual. Uh, open minded people are willing to help others. You know, that's what I try to do is help as many people as I can with the knowledge and expect to receive and do so graciously. So when something fortuitous happens, whatever it may be, I've earned it. I'm gracious and I expect more to come. Always manage risk. On Wednesday, we're going to discuss risk in a lot of detail. I'm going to show it live. 
when you are trading, you've got to have be able to stay in the game. How do you stay in the game? You keep your account. That's it. Don't put 30%, 40% risk in one trade because you think you're right, because you're probably going to be wrong. And I said to take consistent and small profits. If you've seen me trading intraday scalping, I don't try and go for the big runs. If I get $60, $100, $200 a trade, I'm happy with that because it all adds up over a year. And don't be greedy. I talk about Alibaba there, the story of the cave, of course, you know, open sesame. There's a cave full of gold. That's the market. You try and take all the gold out at once, you'll get killed. But you take one coin a day, just a piece, you'll build wealth. And as you'll probably hear in my voice, happy and content. Be happy. Be content. Yeah. Get rid of the negativity. The negativity is destructive. Here are the books that I recommend. Now, I'm going to get this PowerPoint um, uploaded for Wednesday so you can all download it. Okay, so you don't have to write all this down. I will make sure that uh, it may even be by tomorrow. We'll get this PowerPoint out to you so you can keep it and have a look at it uh, as, a, as a reminder. Okay. Uh, Michael says you're using NinjaTrader. I swing stocks. Okay. Yeah, well, well, Michael, the one I'm using is the end of day software. I'll try and do a stock scan quickly at the end just to show you because I've got a couple of stocks I want to look at anyway. So I'll show you what I use. Um, I'm using our end of day software with, with Metastock, and then I'm importing that into either NinjaTrader, TradeStation, or Sierra Chart. It's, all of them work with stocks if that's what you want. But again, one of the best things to do is, speak, is email Laura. If you've got a Skype, um, then put your Skype details in and either – uh, Danny, Jesse, or myself, one of the traders, can actually talk you through what the best options are, depending on what you trade. That's not a problem at all. Um, the Law of Attraction by Michael Lozier is a great book. The Secret by Ron DeBurn, a great book um, by the late Jerry Hicks and Esther Hicks. Very good book. As a Man Thinketh, a very quick 30-page book, I think it is, by James Allen. And, of course, I've already mentioned there, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wattles. Now, why is it fear? paralyzes people when they're trading okay now in this next session which is going to last 20 minutes we're going to talk about why anxiety and fear holds traders back why retail traders fear markets and why they get negative feedback from that from the media how do you turn that negative feedback and the negative stuff coming to you into profit and we're going to talk about the law of repulsion right and the poverty mindset that's created by the media it's not going to be 60 minutes so don't worry there's only about 17 slides to go through. So why do we talk about fear, right? And I'm going to end on a much more positive note, but I'm going to talk about it because it's what drives the stock markets, the futures market, Forex. In fact, there's actually an index that measures fear. Can anyone tell me what it is? Uh, DK, you met Michael Lozier. He's a great guy, yeah. Uh, George, you don't. Uh, yeah, it's the VIX. That's right. Yeah, uh, Donald, next uh, Wednesday, it's going to start um, about 1 p.m. UK time, right before the London fix, which is at 4 p.m. So we can trade into the London fix. But you're right. We have a fear index as traders and investors called the VIX. It's an interesting one. It measures fear. That's <laughs> great, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. The VIX is up today. What does the VIX create? Volatility. What's a trader's greatest friend? Volatility. Why do we like the VIX to be at its highest level? Because we can make money. Why is Donald Trump good for the VIX? Because he creates fear. <laughs> Sorry, it's the fact. The VIX is great. Love it. Love it when there's lots of volatility. Can't make money without volatility. Yeah, uh, Edwin has just said uh, another great book, which I should put on there, which I haven't because it's quite advanced there, but The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle is a super book. I have read it, and I've got it as an audio book as well, Edwin. It's a great book. Great book. Absolutely recommend that as well. Yeah. So The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Very good book. Very good book. Especially if you're in a tough place, by the way, that's a good book. If you're in a really dark place, you're struggling a bit, you're trying to make it financially or whatever, that's a really good book. Very good book. So the fear index, getting back to this, is is, is for, for me, if the VIX is high, it's, it's money-making opportunities. Um, I've already asked this question about have you had negative thoughts in the last seven days, everyone? typed in yes but of course we are now coming into a changing world and wherever there's change there's that saying no pain no gain okay no pain no gain now in fact that is true in everything in life if you want to move forward sometimes there has to be a little bit of pain 
for you to strive for that next level. The world is changing, right? We can't deny it. Doesn't matter what we say, there's been changes. We can look at one of the biggest changes that everyone will remember in 2016, a rank outsider in 2015 to become president of the United States got in. And many, 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 many news stories about, you know, what's going to happen. And there's a lot of them negative, of course. And this one was on the BBC website and it was listing seven ways the world would change. But, you know, again, I'm not a politician and I can't influence what Donald Trump does. That's just I can't I can influence what I can do in my world. So but one thing I can say for certain, the stock market loves the fact that Trump has got in. They've called it the Trump rally. I mean, I've heard it called all sorts of things. All right. So whatever you, we say, the stock market has factored this in. The Brexit. OK, now, of course, this is very close to me because I live in Great Britain. The Brexit, a vote that changes everything. Do you know something? A year ago, they said if we if we if we vote to leave Europe, the pound would collapse, which it's done. They were got that bit right. But then everything else, all our finances here would collapse. People would leave London. None of this has happened. And in fact, the Bank of England last week made an apology. They got it all wrong. In fact, our economy's got much stronger and they're projecting 2% this year of growth, where they were projecting actually negative because of Brexit. They got it all wrong. They don't have a clue. So I don't take any notice. The changing world is good for all of us. So let me ask you, what do you see at the moment? Right, I want you to look very closely at what is on the screen there. Right? opportunity what do you read in your head there just read it out to yourself what do you see nowhere what do you see here yeah <laughs> amy you're one step ahead of me you're too quick that's exactly it what are you are you nowhere are you nowhere and now are you here now you're here you're here All right this is where you are. You're here, right? You're not in space. You're not in the ground. You're here. You're not nowhere. You're now here. So remember that. You are here. What is fear? Why do we have it? It's a distressing negative sensation induced by a perceived or a real threat. Used in the market, it's mostly perceived, by the way. Let me go back here. Okay. So it's an emotion that is basic survival mechanism for human beings occurring in response to a st specific stimulus such as pain or the threat of danger or the threat of losing money they haven't added that one there fear is the ability to recognize danger leading to an urge to confront or free from the threat please don't feed fears feed positive energy don't feed fears because this is what happens this is your human brain and there's something in the brain called the amygdala i'm not going to get too scientific with you but it's defined as this is what happens. You get the fight, flight or freeze response. It's primitive. It's been in us since we were invented. It's an automatic inborn response that prepares the body to flee or, or fight or flee from perceived attack, harm or threat to our survival. Now, of course, we needed that when there were saber toothed lions and everything walking around. But now it causes great stress because we perceive threats because we see them on television. We th we stress over them and the amygdala becomes very active and can cause cortisol to be released, which creates stress. So how do you know if you're trading that you're suddenly getting this, this amygdala hijack, the fear coming in? Well, that's what you feel like. My God, forget everything and run. And if you're losing money, right, my goodness, that's how you get. You, you, and sometimes you can get angry. Fear can create anger. So this is what happens. I mean, the human brain is a very complex instrument, okay? So the, the stem you can see there is, is, is what we all have, connects us to our body. The amygdala, that's the emotional thing that we're talking about here. It's what you use when you're trading. You get these emotionally messages. Then you've got the prefrontal, the thalamus. I'm not going to get into all of this. Just know that the amygdala is what causes your negativity when you're trading and your fear factor. That's where it's coming from. And emotional intelligence is the learned process of accurately perceiving, appraising, and expressing emotion and the ability to regulate your emotions. And if you don't have emotional intelligence as a trader, you will need to develop it. I did. I didn't have it 16 years ago. I had to sit with Tom Williams. I had to learn. I had to make mistakes. 
but that's what my third book's about because I've learned it. I'm much more controlled. I'm much more in, in a process. I've created a process. I've created a trading plan. I'm getting the results. I'm making the connections. I'm traveling. I'm doing all the things I want to do, and I'm running a fund. All of those things happen because of emotional intelligence, and it's a very important part of understanding. If you want to be a trader and an investor, which is one of the reasons you're here, if not the reason, you must develop your emotional intelligence, hence the reason for this long session that we've done today on thought process. OK, so how do you control your thought process when you're in a losing trade or when something's going against you? Well, you've got to experience it. I'll come to that in a second. Stop. Oxnagate. Seek strength. Now, what does that mean? First of all, when something happens, you're in a losing trade or something's going wrong. This can be in anything in life. When I was a policeman and I was in a fight or I was going into a pub, there was a big fight. This is something that we had to learn. First thing you do, you don't rush in. You stop and assess. Right, so if, if a trade's going against you, just stop and look. Right? Don't don't rush in. Don't press buttons. Don't panic. Stop. Oxygen, Jay. What does that mean? <sighs> Deep breaths. Calm. Be calm. You don't have to panic. Be calm. Look around you. Look at the chart. Seek the information. There's always something you've missed. Guaranteed. Always. When I was in the police and, and, and I was in a dangerous situation. I know I could see in front of me the guy with the knife, but I didn't know if there's someone to the right or the left with a knife. Very quickly, if you're in a situation like that, you know to look left and right before you look forward. <laughs> the other thing you need to learn to learn, you very quickly learn as a policeman, is if you go into the uh, the house that's being burgled and then behind you an officer says, dogs in, get the hell out. <laughs> that happened to me. I went rushing in, didn't stop, didn't auction a jay. I was young went through the broken window to chase the burglar, ran up the stairs, dog section arrived, dog's in. Ah, dog does not recognise police uniform. Dog does not recognise radio. Dog bites policeman, not good. So stop, auction rate, seek new information, and then strengthen your focus. So programming your mind is like programming the battery. In fact, you are energy. You are vibrational energy. Like it or not, I can't say anything. You are energy. Right now, energy can move in a positive way or a negative way. So first thing, the energy, the positivity creates your belief system. The beliefs that you have will then create your attitude to the life you live. The attitudes will create your feelings, how you feel about life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your work, how you feel about your trading. Your feelings determine your actions that you physically take, that you they're either positive or negative. And the actions that finally create the results that give you what you want. And unfortunately, that's positive or negative. Does a stop loss ease the fear factor? No. No. <laughs> John says, was that your favorite song? Who let the dogs out? It was actually who let the dogs in? Um, yeah, Andrew, no, stop loss does not. Res I mean, I don't have fear anymore. I trade in front of thousands of people every year. I don't fear it. It's not. I thoroughly enjoy it. I even enjoy it if I lose money, because at the end of the day, it's a cost of doing business. And sometimes I've had more success in the competitions, making a losing trade first and then making the money back. Stop loss doesn't stop loss can be worse sometimes because if you've got it too close to the market and you're trying to trade, you keep getting stopped out, you keep losing money. That's why sometimes I use very wide stop losses or when I'm publicly trading, I move the stop loss to break even as quickly as I can. Regardless, I mean, the other day I took two trades, got stopped out twice for break even. The third trade made money. That's the way it works. Yeah, I'm, you don't need to do this about fearful things. The, the end of the day, forget that. Right. What is fear in the financial markets? It's fear of losses. Yeah. Um, Pet's asking me about a question. How much do I risk intraday? It varies for Forex. I can't give you one figure because every day is different. Every day. Is, what's the most I've ever risked in Forex? About two and a half thousand pounds on my Forex account. I don't trade a big account, but that's the most I've ever risked, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, Themistopoulos is asking, what's a reasonable amount of drawdown on a, on a daily account before you stop trading? For me, it's maximum would be um, probably 5% max, but I've never got to that. If I, if I make three or four losing trades and I'm 3% down on the account, I stop. I don't trade. Often because the market's whipsawing, but that doesn't very happen. That hasn't happened to me very often, to be honest. 
because I trade now in a very tight zone. I'm trading the, the London fix, which is the foreign, well, that's where the markets move. It's when the US market opens and the, US, and the UK market closes. That three hour window is where I make all my money. I don't really make it anywhere else. It's that three hour window. And I can assure you, if you look at that three hour window, that's where the volatility is. So this is what causes people, traders, to, to fear. Uncertainty, there's about to, I mean, how many times have we heard about the market collapsing? only to find it collapses and goes straight back up again. We heard about it a couple of weeks ago. Don't fear it. Look, experiencing a loss is part of doing business. If you can't, if you can't deal with losses and you can't manage your capital, then you shouldn't be trading anyway. So why is it so many lose money in the markets? Well, it's education. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Why, do, why would you fear them? I don't fear a market collapse, but a lot of traders do, Andrew. I personally think it's great if the market falls. It's a wonderful opportunity to make money. I make more money shorting the market than I do when it goes up. So, Andrew, I'm saying this is what other people think. I don't fear it. Far from it. Yeah, Pavel says you've also got the fear of missing out on a move. That's, that's funny. That's an actual. It's the opposite. The market goes up and up and up. It happened in America, by the way, last two years. Most people were so fearful of the market, they wouldn't get in. They missed a massive move. They missed a massive opportunity to make money. <laughs> Michael, good question. I really respect what you're doing for us. But as always, question is, why, if you're such a successful man, would you do this presentation? You can trade, run your fund, and be happy. <laughs> I'm doing that anyway. Because I'm really, well, today I'm doing this on behalf of, 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 of Gideon, but I would do it anyway. I'm doing this to raise money for, for, for Gideon and, and for the Robinson family, but I, I do this anyway. Why do I continue to do this when I'm very busy running funds and doing other things? Yeah, why do I do it? Good question. Well, I'll tell you exactly why, and there's a very good reason. When I first met Tom Williams 16 years ago, and this is before I knew anything, um, and I originally came to the meeting with a view to investing a little bit of money into the company to help them do marketing. And... When Tom first met me, he saw something in me that maybe no one else had. And he realized I had a gift, but it's a gift that I didn't know I had at the time. And he decided to take me under his wing. And he said, look, I'll pretty much give you the company for a very small amount of money. And it was a valuable company at the time. It was valued at the time at just over two million pounds. And he said, I'm going to give you this a very reasonable price, but you must make me a promise. And that promise is this. You will be able to make money with this software. You will be able to retire early, you know, before 55. You will be able to go and uh, run a fund and potentially automate the process, which is where we're currently at. But, Gav, if I sell you this company and I, I've written my book and I've written these rules, the only promise you've got to make to me is you'll never stop sharing that knowledge with people who are prepared to listen. And sometimes do it for nothing. Sometimes do it and charge for it, but whatever. Don't hide behind, hey, I'm running a fund. You're, you're the smart money now, Gavin, and you're going to screw everyone over. Because as I've just mentioned earlier in this seminar, if you didn't listen, whatever you give, you get back 10 times. And that's true. It doesn't matter what, what it is in life. You know, life is, it's not about money, as I'm about to show you. Money, money is great, okay? It's a lovely thing to have, but it's not what life is about. I can show you many, many people who've got money are miserable as hell. I can show you many people I've met in Chicago who've got more money and more Ferraris that they can they don't know what to do with them. They're all taking drugs and getting drunk every night. They're very unhappy people. Okay, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't, but I'm happy, right? Now, that's a, a personal choice. Some people out there, hey, they got so much money. They, I mean, I, I, I saw one story, a guy in Beverly Hills, he's got so much money, doesn't know what to do. I, I mean, you know, the story of Johnny Depp is very sad. Uh, a Hollywood legend, great guy, who, you know, who was spending, I think it was $2,400 a, a week on wine. My God, and he's not happy. He's going through some tough times. Maybe he should have a look at this because it's his thought process that's creating that. So the lack of education, the reason I do this, again, is because I love doing it. Okay, and I love doing it. So finally, from, from Jim Rohn, and this comes back to trading as well. Income rarely exceeds personal development. Income rarely exceeds personal development. You here today have given a currency. Your currency is your time. Your last, what we've been together since 1.30, so nearly three hours, which is what I said. Right. So you have given a currency. You will get from this a great deal. 
because you'll go back, you'll think of some of the knowledge that's been imparted to you. Some of you will apply it. Some of you will take longer to apply it. Some, a, a small percentage may never apply it. It's, it, it's different for everyone. But let, let me leave you with a few things um, before, before we finish here. One of the things I do want to just go back to is the reason, and one of the reasons I decided to do this course for nothing, and it's, you know, I, I love doing it, is because there is a young guy who is an inspiration to a lot of people called Gideon. And Gideon uh, was diagnosed um, just over a year and a half ago now with a very serious form of cancer. And as I mentioned earlier, this guy, this kid is an inspiration. And all I'm going to ask from everyone who's been here and anyone looks at this video, if you are able to donate just a small amount of money, doesn't matter how much it is, most people have been donating anything from 30 to 50 bucks, but whatever it is, this would be very much appreciated by Trade Guider and the, the Trade Guider family. Because the family are under, obviously, as you can imagine, a lot of pressure. And financial pressure, of course, is difficult for anyone. Um, I appreciate that. Um, but we're going to help them as a company, of course. Um, but if you can do anything at all, you can donate from the Facebook page by just clicking on that button now, which takes you through to the GoFundMe page for Gideon. OK. And again, all money goes directly to AJ and the family, the Robertson family, for the benefit of Gideon and uh, for to help him with not just the medical bills, but to help him to recover. And there's nothing more worthwhile in life than helping a young child to go through what's a very difficult moment for them and help them in, in any way we can. Um, it's what we're all here for. We're all brothers and sisters universally. Don't care what anyone says, we are. We're all here to help each other. And with that in mind, I'm just going to read to you a couple of things. Um, this was a document that was put together actually by my brother, which I've changed slightly, but I just think it will sort of end on a, a nice... Um, a nice note and I'll again I'll, I'll put this in the chat area when we finish it's the power of positive affirmation thinking and action in your life can there any be can there be anything more important than our thoughts our thoughts create our reality the quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life both personal and professional your thinking can propel you to success or it can hold you back did you know we have 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts every day staggering have you ever wondered why you think some thoughts um, are there and where they come from? Why have you decided to consciously think about them? How many of those thoughts do you actively think about and absorb which affect the way you feel physically and mentally? I.e. stress, headaches, anxiety, temper, lack of confidence, nausea, worry, pessimism, etc. How many are uplifting, happy and positive thoughts? How many are negative, worrying, nagging thoughts? I hear so many people say, I can't change because the way I am, I've always been like that. It can't be done. I haven't got the confidence. I'm terrible at that. He, she is better than me at that. I'll never get the hang of it. He, she has more experience or I'll never be a trader or investor. Well, you will. These are conditioned thoughts and they can be changed. And great news. All you have to do is recognize them. And then when you start thinking negatively, stop it. Stop it. Right. Change the negative into a positive narration in your mind, whatever it may be. Be conscious of negativity. Be conscious of, oh, I haven't got any money. Oh, I can't afford that. I can't. The word can't is negative. When you hear the word can't, say, how can I? Right? The word can't means there's a solution in the universe. How can I? Okay, so stop. Red light the negativity and do it as soon as it comes in. You'll get very quick results. And I'm talking quick. If you keep thinking negatively, you will feel negative. The secret to genuinely positive thinking is to recognize when you are thinking badly. The sooner you red light the bad thoughts, the sooner you'll feel better. Can it be done overnight? It'll take a bit of work, okay? A little bit of work on your behalf. If you could pay for a feeling of well-being, confidence, satisfaction, happiness, optimism, how much would you pay? I'm assuming a great deal. All you need to do is the four R's. Recognition that you've got bad thoughts, replacing them with positive thoughts, repeating those positive thoughts, and enjoying the positive result and then you'll feel a lot better so remember a word of warning beware of negative attitudes from anyone or people who haven't discovered this because they are out there they're treading on thin ice and it won't be long before they crash through it as well don't let them take you down or deter you very important that eh? very important you will get negative people that you'll talk to because you've attracted them initially and they may be negative. You don't want to listen to them. Motivate yourself with the self-talk. Give the negative stuff that red light. Remember, you're not your subconscious thoughts. 
You have limited control over them, so go easy on yourself. You only take control when you consciously start absorbing thoughts. So decide on which thoughts are good for you, which ones are holding you back. And it's the same with trading and investing. You've got to make some good decisions. Okay, and you can do it right now. Reach for the stars, it says. And I'm going to read a couple of poems to you. Then finally, I'm going to read some words from Steve Jobs to finish with. This is by Walter Wintle, and it's about thoughts. Sums it up beautifully and sums up what we've talked today. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out of the world we find, success begin with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Do you think you can? And I'll say man or woman because it applies to everyone. This is from Invictus, the Unconquerable. One of the night that covers me, out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate, and I am the captain of my soul. And finally, some final words from Steve Jobs. These were the words that he asked to be written before he passed away at 56. He was on the hospital bed as these were written. I think it summarises for all of us. It's a real wake-up call. Um, well, I'll read them, and I think you'll realise why I'm reading them. I've come to the pinnacle of success in business. In the eyes of others, my life has been the symbol of success. However, apart from work, I have little joy. Finally, my wealth is simply a fact to which I am accustomed. At this time, lying on the hospital bed and remembering all my life, I realise that all the accolades and riches of which I was once so proud have become insignificant with my imminent death. In the dark, when I look at green lights of the equipment for artificial respiration and feel the buzz of their mechanical sounds, I can feel the breath of my approaching death looming over me. Only now do I understand that once you accumulate enough money for the rest of your life, you have to pursue objectives that are not related to wealth. It should be something more important. For example, stories of love, art, dreams of my childhood. No, stop pursuing wealth. It can only make a person into a twisted being just like me. God has made us one way. We can feel the love in the heart of each of us and not illusions built by fame or money like I made in my life. I cannot take them with me. I can only take with me the memories that were strengthened by love. This is the true wealth that will follow me, will accompany you. He will give you strength and light to go ahead. Love can travel thousands of miles and so life has no limits. Move to where you want to go. Strive to reach the goals you want to achieve. Everything is in your heart and in your hands. What is the world's most expensive bed? The hospital bed. You, if you have money, you can hire someone to drive your car, but you cannot hire someone to take your illness that's killing you. Material things lost can be found, but one thing you can never find once you've lost it is life. Whatever stage of life where we are right now, at the end we will have to face the day when the curtain falls. Please treasure your family, love, love for your spouse, love for your friends. Treat everyone well and stay friendly with your neighbours. Moments after speaking those words that he had asked to be written down, Steve Jobs, 56, passed away. And with that, I want to say to all of you, thank you very much. Now, what I'm going to do, as I promised I would do, I'm going to do a scan of the stock market because it's something I want to show you, which is very important for next week for our uh, a live trading session. For those of you that are asking about um, the donation page, I've actually put it in here in the room. Um, and I'll post it in again for those of you that said you didn't see it. It's in here. Or you can email my wife, Laura. Um, let's just post it in the room. There it is. 
Okay, and that goes directly to the uh, to the GoFundMe page. Right, let me swap sh sh screens here quickly, and I'm going to go over. And I know I'll finish off with the questions because there's quite a few of those have come in as well. So, yeah, I'll, I'll put the uh, link to that in as well to the, the Steve Jobs thing as well. So I'll leave that with me. Uh, right, let's go and put these charts up here. Okay, can everyone see my screen here of um, the end of day soft, uh, the end of day's program? Yeah, Paul, I am recording Wednesday just to answer your question. Yeah, Tom, I saw your comment, and yeah, there's there's that story too of of, uh, of Steve. That's true. Okay, good. All right, so let's go and have a look. Okay, good. Uh, thanks, Olga. You've just put a link in there, I think, to a, a YouTube. In fact, Olga, could you email that to me because I can't cut and paste it? Um, my email is just gavinh at tradeguider.com. I'll have a look at that. I'm always interested in stuff, so gavinh at tradeguider.com is, uh, is the address. So, look, I've done a, a, a stock scan here. And I'm not going to do the whole scan, but I want to draw your attention to Netflix. And I'm going to start off here with the weekly chart, okay, because this is a stock that we're going to talk about on Wednesday when we do the live trading session. Now, just so you know, the links to that are all going to come out um, on tomorrow night or Monday morning. So don't email us. Don't ring us. The links will go out. Don't worry. Um, they'll definitely be there, um, and you'll see them. Uh, it'll be a link to a um, go to webinar event and you'll you'll um you'll get the uh the link that you just register for and because you've already been in this room you're prioritized over anybody else anyway okay so let me just put this in okay i've just posted that in the room which is the that document uh oh it, it won't allow me to put it in there i don't know why hmm. try just one more time quickly if i cut if not i'll have to just email it with um the other files which i will do so now it won't let me do it all right not to worry well um we'll send it out to you so netflix i want to draw your attention to some principles on this chart to finish off with um i'm not going to have time to analyze lots of charts because i've got to finish this i did say i'll try and finish this uh in the next minute or two so i'm going to keep this fairly brief but what i want to draw your attention to is what's happened here last week now first of all we've got a very clear delineation here of a top you can see we hit it once, came down. There's a lot of buying on this bar here. We can see very clearly it's a down bar, it's a test. We've come back down into that area on another test, much lower volume, as we can see in this area. And then the market responds with a very, very high volume bar, no red signal on it, which means this is potentially what we call absorption volume. As the market absorbs this, it moves down and pushes and makes a new high. And then last week, lo and behold, a test. Now, if this test holds, we could see a breakout in Netflix well away from this area because this volume here isn't excessively high. And this is a lovely example here of what we call absorption volume, meaning that this stock is very bullish. It's one of the most bullish. In fact, it's the third most bullish stock in the index. And it's a very strong. And again, Andrew said you've got it on the NASDAQ as well. Yeah, you will. So this is one that when we talk on Wednesday about bringing together some of the instruments we're going to trade, we're going to look at some of these stocks. And what we're going to do is put them into trade station on a one hour time frame, a 15 minute time frame and a four hour time frame and see if we can get trades to the long side. Because I think next Tuesday and Wednesday will be when these markets are going to move um, for definite. You wait after you've seen that test. You wait for the market this next week to go above the test bar. As soon as it moves up to around 142, then I should be taking a call option to the long side on this. And again, I'll share that strategy with you um, on Wednesday.
So I think I've answered all the questions. Um, I want to wrap this up now because I don't want the recording to be uh, too long. Thank you very much for those of you that are already um, helping Gideon. I can see quite a few people have already uh, donated. I appreciate that very much. Um, and, and I know AJ does as well. If you want to find out more, there is that Facebook page there. It's just facebook.com forward slash iron Gideon. And what a, again, an inspiration. I hope you've all enjoyed today's, um, well, it's been a bit of a marathon session, but I hope I've covered stuff that will at least um, open your mind, really. So I've said the mind is like a parachute, best used when open. And that's definitely true. Um, you know, the mind is a parachute. And once you open it, and once you understand um, that there is opportunities all around you, you'll see them and they'll come to you very, very clearly. So on behalf of um, Gideon, the Robinson family, everyone and Trey Guider and myself, God bless, take care, wishing you constant profits and have a great rest of your weekend. And thank you for your time. Bye bye.